it's only it's only it's only one more it's only one more week. It's only oh. one more week until Elden Ring comes are you, out. Are you gonna make it? I, I I might. I don't like to get excited about stuff like this. Yeah. But, uh, there you go. You're so hyped. They got me. Yeah. They fucking got me. Who would have guessed? Who of would've? all the games. Yeah. Of all <laughs> of all the games in all the universe, all the podcasts in all the world. This is the Rage Slick podcast. That's not really how that saying goes. Uh, here at Rage Slick, time, Jeff. Oh, Amanda. Uh, we got a. Uh, we got a lot. Of, we got a lot of stuff today, Amanda. We do. We got a lot of stuff today. I swear I'm not drunk. I'm just a little. I little, know. Yeah. What's little going sleepy. On? Little sleepy. Got my. We talked about drugs before this, and then you walked away to go to the restroom. <laughs> when you came back, and you're like, "Let's get started." I'm a little. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. Um. Yeah, I just talk about drugs, and I start thinking about drugs, and, and then, then I get high off of drugs. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. No, it's just it's been a it's been a very weird month <laughs> february yeah i got my gas bill it's like eight times my normal gas bill Why? like my, my gas bill during the summer is like 30 dollars, and then apparently for february where it was cold and i had my heat on it's like 120 dollars. and crazy. i'm just like say what yeah mm-hmm. um so i'm a little i'm a little jarred actually you know what it might have something to do with the fact i was gonna i was thinking about last week i i decided that i was gonna watch that new Kimi movie, the, oh, the yeah, Steve, yeah. Steve Soderbergh movie that uh-huh. came out on HBO, and then I went to go watch it last night, and HBO was down for some reason. So instead, on a whim, I watched this movie called Big Bug on Netflix. Okay, uh, do you, are, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? I, I don't think so. Okay, so uh, do you know who Jean Pierre Genet is? The the guy that made like Delicatessen and City of Lost Children. Yes, and, yeah. Okay, and Amelie, and and there's another one called Mick Max. Yeah. He's been gone for a long time, and then he made this new movie that's on Netflix called Big Bug. I got I got to pull up a trailer, and yeah, it's like I need to see this. It's very, it's so weird. I don't know if I would call it good per se. Yeah. Um, very French. But it's okay. So it's like a bunch of people that live in this like future futuristic future house and everything is like robots in this future house and Uh, it looks animated but like live action it looks a lot like speed racer Ah, yeah what the fuck was that (laughs) so it's like everybody lives in this house full of robots and all the robots do all the chores and all the humans are trying to fuck each other it's like this lady and this dude and like this looks like a shitty 90s music video yes it does it looks like the music video for that blue badu b or or whatever blue by eiffel 65 yeah um and so and so then what happens is because there there's like a weird uh like a weird problem and the house locks down and nobody can leave and so it's kind of like a weird sex comedy yeah but also was also with all these robots and it gets weirder and weirder and weirder as time goes on because it's like this lady and her ex-husband with his new girlfriend and yeah. this guy that's trying to have sex with the lady and then like her kid and the guy the guy's kid and all these robots and then there's also these like horrible military robots that are trying to like coup mankind and like take over yeah and it's really yeah, really it strange so weird look up <laughs> this tra- just because the robot people are so fucking weird looking yeah because there's like there's like an android lady robot who's very weird but then there's like some there's, there's some like a robot robots tooth, like robocop looking dude yeah with like this like these big teeth that is always smiling yeah it's so fucking weird and here's the thing i don't think that it would be uh, it's not like a universal recommend like i think i can universally recommend like hey man if you're into artsy like weird shit like delicatessen or city of lost children or yeah. amelie those are all those are pretty unqualified recommends like i can say yeah yeah totally this like has these really cheap looking special effects yeah it's and it's mainly like a sex comedy more than it is a robot uprising comedy. Yeah, uh, yeah. They just did a montage of like weird, sexy stuff, and it's like this is. Yeah. So God like Jesus, <laughs> it's it's it was very bizarre. It was on Netflix. Uh, yeah. And I remember seeing the, the 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 like the thumbnail on my Netflix just had the big smiling Yonix robot guy on it. Yeah. And I was like, well, I I really like Jean Pierre Genet. Like I really like his his brand of insanity. And what this kind of is is like what he would make now 
with like some cheap CGI, yeah. you know, and and this kind of this looks like an adult, um, uh, fucking Robert Rodriguez like Spy Kids. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yes. Um, and I don't. It's just it's so fucking bizarre. Yeah, like, I can't so look weird. away from it. I'm like, I'm probably gonna watch this tonight. <laughs> it's also, I mean, it's like, uh, I think it's like an hour and a half, or uh, somewhere between an hour and a half and two hours. But <sighs> yeah, it's it's really bizarre. Um, it can be a little slow in places, but it's definitely. I mean, like the other thing I watched last week was uh, that that Reacher show on Amazon. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, I mean, it's just. I, I want to. I don't want it to, just to sound like it's coming off as like a critique or a criticism or like a negative thing, but just you know, Jack Reacher stories are this guy rolls into town and he's got all the answers and he's the biggest guy, yeah, and he's the strongest he, he, guy, and he's the smartest guy, yeah. and everybody else is like, uh, you don't know anything, you big dumb lug, and he's like, actually, I'm the smartest one, yeah, and I can kick everybody's ass. Is he a Mary Sue? He's a, Mar a Marty Stew, I believe, is what they call really? the, the male version. Uh, Ga Gary Stew, I think sometimes Gary they call him. Gary Stew is a good one. But the thing is that, like, so is John Wick in John Wick. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, I don't even think there's anything wrong with that. Like, sometimes it's fun to watch a character. Like, 90% of Angelina Jolie characters yeah. in any movie is her just being better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that, honestly. I can live with that. Yeah. But it, it's fun to watch sometimes. It, but, yeah, it's just funny. It's also, I didn't know this, but a Apparently in the books, the character of Jack Reacher is supposed to be like six foot seven brick shit house. Oh, did you not know that? Because fucking like four foot nothing Tom Cruise played him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I don't know anything about it. There was a, I remember when I remember when he got cast and people were pissed. Yeah. Because he's he was supposed to, yeah, everyone was very like, he's supposed to be this like giant dude. Because he has to stand on like a, a milk crate in order to do a scene with <laughs> I mean, yeah. They Sorry, put him, man. He's not a tall guy. They put like. him on a forklift and just beep, 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 lift him up. I to... know for a fact they do that shit to make him seem like he's taller. Yeah, like, 100%. Um, not that I would have any problem watching, you know, if there was like a Tom Cruise action movie and he was like a foot shorter than everybody else and I would just be like, okay, I mean, he's shooting guns at people. I, this like, might just be the comic book fan in me, but like... Wolverine is tiny. It's supposed to be a very tiny character. Oh, yeah. He is super imposing on most people despite his height. So, yeah. like, I can watch Tom Cruise and be like, oh, an action guy? Okay. Yeah. And not be like, but why isn't he six foot two? Right. But it is kind of cool to watch this guy just, like, tower over everybody. Yeah. And um, they also give him, like, a 50 caliber Desert Eagle, which works for the fact that he's this huge guy mm -hmm. and um so it was it was kind of stupid but it was fun to watch yeah um i don't know what about you you watch a lot of movies man you see anything good uh, uh, tell people about? i have not been um doing a good job keeping up with watching movies i'm trying to see if i posted watching anything oh uh, i did get obsessed with um wayne white mm -hmm. he's the uh artist and creator of the puppets from um peewee's playhouse okay he created all and then he also did the ones for shining time station and uh of like thomas tank engine not yeah, yeah. the tank engines but you know like the, the in the space the train station the puppet shows and stuff that would happen in there mm -hmm. um uh they they did a documentary about him a few years ago i want to say like 2012 okay uh called beauty is embarrassing and it was just all about him and it goes through his history of like being this like hippie in the 70s and like get becoming this like cool. it was about hippies that turn into puppeteers <laughs> I, yeah I, you know it's funny but he is a much more like he's like punk Mm -hmm. version of Jim, Jim Henson. Henson. Yeah. Okay. So he's really cool. He's still like making art now. Maybe not the 70s, but, like early 80s. Late okay. seven, well, yeah, probably late 70s. But yeah. yeah. Same old, same old. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's, yeah, he's super cool. I, I uh, just like became super obsessed with his work for a while, like hyper fixated on him for a little bit okay. for like a week. And that's like basically all. I've, and then I just like been sewing at home and that's it. Like I haven't been watching anything. My 365 movies mm -hmm. is just going to be like <laughs> four days of me like desperately watching 20 <laughs> movies at once because I am not hitting my numbers. Like so I I gotta, I'm calling into work. I got this big bag of cocaine. Basically. I'm catching up. This is the night before the exam yeah. and I'm going to find all of Kind of. Like I have this very long list list but unfortunately the movies that people keep recommending to me not mm. streaming anywhere uh, so like and i don't just want to be like well i have to watch a movie let's put on you know netflix and like some shitty thing that i really don't care about or sure. whatever um 
so but i do have not next week but the like last week of february Mm -hmm. uh we had a bunch of big orders at my work so i was like i'm gonna take a week off and uh (laughs) so i'm avoiding all of it and i'm i have five days off where i'm just gonna watch movies and so and just do whatever the fuck i want yeah that sounds great yeah. staycation a little staycation yeah yeah i was like i'm going out of town and they're like for what and i'm like all right i'm not going out of town. <laughs> i was like i couldn't think of a lie fast enough and they're like well i mean we're still gonna give you the time off listen i don't care enough to lie about this yeah honestly <laughs> they like they of minor pressure were like well tell us what's going on like you know you want to you're going out of town you're visiting your family what's going on and i was like all right yeah no i'm just i just don't want to be here <laughs> that reminds me of uh, a long time ago when I when I was a Square and I worked at Microsoft. Uh, I remember going to my boss one time and being like, "Hey, I need like next Friday off." And he was like, "Why?" I'm like, because there's a concert I want to see on Thursday and I'm going to be really hungover on Friday. And I don't want to come to work. And he was like, "Uh, I don't I don't think I can give you a day off because you're going to be hungover." And I was like, "Listen, man." I work with like five people that have families and I cannot count the number of times they have left to pick their kid up or there's been a problem where they have to go deal with the car. I don't ever take a day off. So like, why don't you do this or I'll just call in sick and then, or you can, and, or you can fire me like, because just because you don't have a family doesn't mean that you shouldn't ever get to take a day off Yeah, because you know, like I want to play Elden Ring for 40 hours straight and melt my eyes out is just as good as, as an excuse to me as like oh my kid Jimmy has it's a like, recital right. yeah, yeah. I, it's just like everyone needs time off and you shouldn't have to justify why you want time off as long as i'm like giving you some warning of like yep. look i i i want this day off so i can stay home and do nothing or go do something what mm-hmm. does it matter like i just need time off yeah yeah it's not it's not i don't have to justify my what i my time to you yeah it's so <laughs> weird yeah so but that was a long time ago that was before all the current nonsense um well speaking of justifying your time to other people yes there was an hour long cyberpunk uh 2077 i didn't watch s- any of it stream it was it was it it was good it was a good thing that you did not watch it mm-hmm. um so okay here we go I feel again. This is always it's like such a throwback. Uh, every rage like podcast is the same rage like podcast. Now it's like living in Groundhog Day, and I apologize. It's just there's not much. You know, yeah. Activision was shitty. Battlefield 2042 is broken. Like somebody bought something and NFTs are bad. Uh, like yeah. the, the end. Just it's like a Mad Lib every week. But <laughs> uh, CD Projekt Red came out with this stream. It was like a. Um, the stream was here. We're showing off the next gen versions of Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, these were supposed to come out mid 20. Well, <laughs> the game was released in November of 2020, and it was supposed to be out by like January of 2021. And mm-hmm. it was mid to like last quarter of 2021. Now it's 2022. God damn. Um, they showed off a bunch of things. But the but the big headline here is that they also were like, and the next gen versions for the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X are out right now. Mm-hmm. You can go download them immediately. Like if you own the previous versions, you can get them. I believe the PS Five has a um, like a three hour trial, uh, free trial that you can do. That then, uh, if you buy the whole game, your save game just transfers over into it. Um, this presentation was kind of interesting in that they all the footage that they showed was in uh i don't know how much you know about this but most games these days come with like the uh turn ray tracing on and it's 30 frames per second or prioritize like 60 frames per second yeah. uh all of the footage that they showed here was in performance mode um which the game still looks really good and yeah. a lot of times those will take a hit um but they showed off they made a lot of changes we're going to go over some of them <laughs> there's kind of a thing here though where like Part of this was not just that they were releasing these, but this patch 1.5 that changed a whole bunch of things in the game. Like, Mm -hmm. basically, this game is now up to what I would have expected it to be when it came out. Yeah, what Uh, it should have been when it came out. Yeah, and I want to be really clear that that means the day that it came out 
and then like it needs a year worth of patches to fix all the things that people found once it came out. Mm -hmm. Like I do not for the life of me think like I have been holding off on playing this game until it's quote unquote until I feel it's done. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is like the starting point. This is like you've gotten to an acceptable level to where anybody should play this game yeah. because like part of the things that they were adding in these patch notes were like, oh, they fixed the combat AI so that like the enemies now will like take cover or like rush you or yeah. like have better AI or like um, if you shoot on the street and there's a crowd there, the crowd will get like uh, uh, will get panicked and run away from you and like cars right. will drive away from yeah, you. Yeah, like, like things the, will react the way they should. Right. The things that you would expect there to be there from the beginning, like yeah. things that were basic in any other video game. But one of the things that I really wanted to call out from this was that they, a lot of this was patch notes mm -hmm. and they kept referring to it as DLC. Uh. Like they kept saying that like, you know, like one of the things that's in here, <sighs> there's a photo mode for the game, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they added to the photo mode was a bunch of new um, poses for Johnny Silverhand, the Keanu Reeves character. Yeah. And they were like, yes, and we have DLC for Johnny Silverhand as well. When you go into photo mode, there's a bunch of new poses that you could put him in to take photos for. And it's like, that's not really up to the level of what I would consider downloadable content. Like, yeah. it, it, it may have been programmed that way, but like the fact that you guys keep talking about how like, you know, you could summon three cars at the same time and they won't all spawn on top of each other and explode. That DLC we added, and it's like, that's a hmm. bug fix, it's, man. Yeah. Like that, or or a small feature add to the game. Um, that's not exactly what we what gamers would consider DLC. Yeah. Like DLC would be like, oh, there's a new campaign, not like we put two new scopes in a shop. Yeah. Uh, like, th so I don't know. That bugged me a little bit. I'll say that um, uh, we'll go over some of this stuff. I'll say that this this little uh, kind of gameplay slice that they taught that they showed looked pretty cool. It still appears that um, it appears like the gameplay is largely similar to what it was before, where it's mostly kind of just shooting at people. And there's some quick hacking stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's some dialogue trees. It does appear that the game is running pretty smooth much better than it was yeah because i was running the xbox one version on the series x and i get loaded faster it was ran a little bit better but it wasn't like anything to write home about um but then they go into like i don't know a solid 45 minutes of of discussing the individual things added to the tech tree like yeah one of the things i do like that they did though was apparently there was a one of the skill trees was called stealth and they changed it from stealth to ninjutsu. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think the quote was like, to better reflect like what's in that tree. And it's like, oh, that's good. Because yeah. I tried to play the game as a stealth character and it was like half baked and not very good. But like if it's just like, oh, this so is sneaky you're... ways to kill people. Yeah. Now uh, you're playing as a ninja. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of stuff in here. I think that the one that they seem really, really, really obsessed with is apparently previously uh, you could equip like a knife and you could like throw your knife. Yeah. Um, and now like, but then players would throw the knife and then like it would hit somebody and, or they would miss and it would just get lost because mm -hmm. you'd go find it and pick it up again. And now apparently like when you throw the knife, there's a little reticle that comes up and then like when it counts all the way down, you just get your knife back oh, and you can throw smart. it again. Um, which does seem to to and add to player enjoyment, so yeah, they don't have to be like, "I'm on a hunt for a knife." Right. Except that in the in the little gameplay thing, the person that's demonstrating it keeps running over and picking up the knife as opposed to letting it come back. Um, yeah. But you know, uh, it seems like it's fine. They added a bunch of new stuff to the vehicles, like they showed off that the the motorcycles have like neon on the inside of the the tires they made a really big deal about like, i didn't know this about uh, apparently you can like burn out now like you could do donuts in a car or on a motorcycle or yeah. whatever and it's just like this is if a game has cars in it i expect that to be like yeah that a seems default pretty thing. standard <laughs> yeah yeah um this in this day and age, yes, in the, we're <laughs> eight Fast and Furious movies in. You don't think I want burnout in a driving part of At this, this game? Latitude <laughs> uh, entirely in your uh, video game. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So 
okay, fine. Um, one of the other things that they showed off was um, it was funny too because this live stream. This is also a bad live stream. We have two live streams today, and they're both fucking terrible. Yeah. From a production perspective, of they keep talking over each other uh. and interrupting each other, <sighs> and like John watches these um, game launch or not game, but. Um, uh, uh, action figure launch um, live streams mm-hmm. like and for like Common Rider and stuff like that. Oh my god, it's the word. I just like <laughs> if volume has to be down or you gotta be in a different room. I can't listen to that shit. And I don't know if it's because we've done podcasting for so long that we meaning you and I will are maybe more like shitty about it and like other people are a little more tolerant of it but like I can't do the like well yeah I'll go oh. I just oh, no, you, uh, no, no. You know, yeah. oh, no, 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 you, you go. go, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> shut up! Like, if you if you can't do this properly, just have one guy reading a script. Yes. Well, and also it, it well it comes off again. This and then also later on we're going to talk about WWE 2K. Uh, uh, but like, yeah, th- this comes off as if like they. Nobody practiced this ahead of time. Yeah. Nobody had an idea of what they were going to do. That they kind of had like an outline, but then they've also got like there's a person running the you know this person is playing the game. There's another person who's like the community manager, and then there's like a programmer and a producer, mm-hmm. and they all want to say stuff. And a lot of times, one of them will like cut the other ones off to explain something that happened five minutes ago or is completely unrelated to what's happening on the screen yeah. right now. And it's just like, guys, I've watched, I mean, um, uh, Nether Realms live streams with like Mortal Kombat 11 was coming out. Those were great. Yeah. Or like any of the Mr. Sakurai streams for Smash Brothers. Those are good. Like, Well, yeah, I think in general, like <sighs> they're just very good. Yeah. Um, just Nintendo direct it. Yeah. Like, why? Why? Well, they did. All of their previous live streams were like these ultra produced things. The only thing I can think of is that they like, uh, maybe they like planned on putting this out at a certain time and then they were like look guys uh we can't wait just like st- do a live stream and put it out now because yeah. there was no run up to this like we've been in this dead zone of news like it's it's a it's a weird thing to talk about with CD Project Red with the with the failure of Cyberpunk 2077 of like they have a roadmap, right? Mm-hmm. But then they miss the roadmap, and they put out a statement saying, like, well, we're not going to be able to make the deliverable by the time that we wanted to make it. Uh, further information will be forthcoming. And then they never say anything. And then it's like, I had, you know, it wasn't like there was a thing that was like, next week, we're going to have a big announcement. You know, everybody tune in. And it wasn't until after this even happened where I found out that, oh, shit, this happened. Yeah. Um, you know, like I know that a Nintendo Direct or an Xbox thing is going to happen like a week ahead of time. Yeah, everyone knows on my Twitter is just people counting down to the next Nintendo Direct. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the, yeah, I don't know. I always hate this. And I always feel like it's like the community people that they hire, right? Like they're, mm-hmm. it just sometimes feels like they're like, I want to be on camera. Right. And like, let me be a little bit of the like, I'm not like trying to be the internet personality person, but kind of where it's just very, hey, everybody, it's your boy again. And they get right. into it and it's just like, I can't. It's I fucking so much, hate it. It's so much worse for the WWE one. At least, like, so this lady down here at the bottom, this blonde lady, she was like the front facing presenter for all of the live streams and presentations they had right up until the launch point. Yeah. But like the fact that they've got, and, and in th- those days, it's like they would. She would do an intro and then be like, I'm going to kick it over to fucking Jimmy and he's going to talk about weapons for 15 minutes. Yeah. And you be like, hey, everybody, I'm Jimmy. I do weapons programming. See Project Red. I'm here talking about swords today. Yeah. We're like swords, you know, that kind of thing. But Which makes, I just don't know why you can't organize it that way. Like, it It's just, also just, it's not a good idea for a game that has a reputation for being buggy to demonstrate this stuff on a live stream. I mean, I guess in one way you could say that it's like, creating uh like authenticity and like um uh, confidence in the community yeah that you're willing to show the game in a non-scripted way because we got so burned with the fact that they were showing these very 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 polished right. snippets but even good games <sighs> have issues when you're live streaming yes and so it's just like why set yourself up for that kind of thing? i don't know it's also it's i don't it's just very weird anyway more stuff uh, the the like apparently the they now have a clock for you to wait 
like when you you if you want to wait a certain amount of time it'll show you like what time of day you're going to get at instead of just like what number of hours do you want to wait yeah what's fucked up is that that interface is in the witcher 3 when you go to meditate and you choose like what time of day you want to stop at uh, we could just (laughs) copy another game and hope for the best yeah uh they went back they they show off a little bit one of the other thing big things that they showed um the map has been redone to show like the different status icons um one of the biggest things is apparently now you can uh, you go back to your apartment and you could change the way your character looks, which was a big thing, mm-hmm. or this like ultra specific um, character creation system, and then like you couldn't do anything once you hit the play button, you were yeah. just locked in. Um, now you can go to your mirror and you can redo certain things. Um, Another big thing that they talked about was apparently you can now skin your apartment. You can, and you can buy new apartments around Night City. Yeah. And then there's like different things that like there's like um like if you take a shower you get refresh status which for a certain amount of time is like an experience point buff or like yeah. if you sleep you'll get a certain status buff so yeah. there's reasons to interact with the stuff in the because it's one of these things where it's just like I mean like I don't know unless I'm role playing like by myself. You're in your apartment in I the think, game. Like, in video games, everyone will do like whatever once. Yeah. You know, like, oh, there's a shower. Oh, there's a little like mini shower animation for two seconds or whatever. Yeah. And then that's it. Like any video game where they have a fucking press X to flush next to a toilet, people will flush the toilet. Once. Once. And then they'll <laughs> never do it again. But like if you get like a buff or something for it, like that's a nice way of making it a reason. Yeah. They, um, they went to uh they apparently have redone a lot of the romances Mm -hmm. there's like four or five people that you can romance in the game and apparently they have like extended those relationships and the whole quest line of doing them further to have more interactions with them one of the things they talked about is apparently if you just if you're in a relationship with somebody in the game and you go to sleep sometimes when you wake up they'll be in your bed next to you or whatever um so again like a lot of these things i mean there's a huge there's a huge 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 like list of of patch notes for this and they're they you mean dlc notes dlc notes exactly um you know and it just goes on and on and on and like the crowd improvements and the driving model and balancing and the cyberwares and combat and the you know all the things and it it goes on and on and on but like i read through these things it took me fucking like a half hour I to read imagine. through imagine they're like scrolling through and it's everything yeah, just it's everything 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 um and to me i feel like at the end of the day this is this is where it should have been mm-hmm. at launch. Um, it's also interesting to note that some of these things, not all of them, but a few of them, are like not implemented on the last gen versions. So the Xbox really? One or the PS4 versions is just like these systems do not have the processing power to have these enhancements, and so they don't. Can't burn out with your car. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> uh, also, apparently, uh, Windows 7 isn't going to be uh, supported after June 15th of 2022. Huh. Um, which, you know, considering Windows 7 is really old at this point. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I got Windows 11 on my computer. Windows 10 is pretty much everywhere. Mm-hmm. So I don't necessarily think that's like a huge thing. Um, but yeah, there's just like one dude in Iowa that's really upset about this. <laughs> He's like, "All right, I want to. I'm running an <laughs> RTX 3090 on Windows 7. I I need my. I don't trust it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, it it the thing is that it all looks good. Like they show yeah. kind of a PS5 version. But at the end of the day, my my attitude towards this game is that like they're not. There's another story later on about a new update to No Man's Sky. Mm-hmm. The thing is that the this what we see here is like the starting point for Cyberpunk 2077. Mm-hmm. Um, there is supposed to be content updates and full-on DLC enhancements to the game. I personally am never going to replay an RPG like this. So, like, I would rather wait. Even if it's in a playable state now, I'd rather wait until they say, 
until they start selling the definitive edition yeah. that has all four years of DLCs, all of the gameplay improvements, all the optimizations that they've done. Oh, yeah. we added in a whole other system. Yeah, like I don't want to play a rough draft. Give me the final product. Yeah, and it, I, to me, it's also kind of weird that when you look at that list of the things that they've added, and it's just like this game was really like 70% even – finished even by video game day one standards yeah. when it, it initially came out and so like i'm a little tempted because you know these videos that they put out they've got some kind of action and stuff and they look they look pretty cool but on the other hand it's like i i'm, I'm not I'm not sitting around in a gaming desert right now going yeah. like, what should I play? Like, I got too many games to play. The last thing in the world that I need is this. I can afford to wait until this thing is done yeah. and then have, like, a good experience with it as opposed to doing it. But then, I mean, like uh, again, I realize that there are a lot of people in the world that, like, I played The Witcher 3 five times to see all the different endings. And I'm like, that's great for you. I do not want to do that yeah. personally. That so. doesn't sound enjoyable to me, but... But, you know, you you and I are very – we're fucking buzzy flies, man. We just want to go from thing to thing to thing to thing yeah. to thing. Like, no, we very don't want to just so. soak in the same JRPG for, like, a year, you mm -hmm. know, or play The Witcher and be like, oh, I finally got to the second map. It's been four months of, of doing every single icon on the first map, yes. you know. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's – that's kind of where we're at. But I mean, you know, it's nice that if somebody, if there was a person that was kind of midway between like early adopter and then like me waiting for the final product, who was like, I just want to play a game that isn't broken. Mm -hmm. This seems like the least broken that this game has ever been. Yeah. It's like this is a like a functional <laughs> game? Yeah, because I mean, as near as I can tell, none of the things that they have changed impact the main storyline mm -hmm. or, you know, Keanu Reeves and the Johnny Silverhand thing or V's general main story arc so like if you wanted a version where you could just do the main story arc and get to the end of it mm -hmm. it seems like this is a version that would totally work for that yeah for sure um also i remember reading in the comments somebody talking about how like uh apparently the 1.5 update is also just like well one of the things the 1.5 I'm, I'm not going to go over everything that it did because there was too many things but like they added in support for that uh amd has a an AI up sampling tech like what the NVIDIA cards have. Mm -hmm. Like the modern cards, I don't know if you know this, but the modern cards will render at a lower resolution and then use artificial intelligence to fill in the pixels between to then up sample it. Mm -hmm. And NVIDIA has that on their their G uh, their 30 series cards. Um, AMD is just rolling out their version of that and they added that feature into this patch. But apparently it also just runs better. That's another one of the reasons, though, that I think it's good to wait is the idea that it's like as all of these other things get fixed, if they also are continually optimizing like, yeah. the game, that you may be in a place – I. I don't know for sure, but I feel like in a certain number of years we're going to get to a point where like the console games – don't require you to choose between a high frame rate or ray tracing. Right. Because there are already some that do both and that it's just a matter of time before there's some engine update or some technique that comes out in the industry where everybody's just like, now you can have them both turned on. And it's like, great. That's how I want to play this game. I want to play it with a high frame rate with ray tracing turned on and all of the content for several years all in the same place. So, but dream big. Yeah. I mean, again, it's one of those things where I understand because I used to be very much just like, just give it to me, give it to me now. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how broken it is. I don't give a fuck. I'm just, I'm so excited. You can, you know, don't even finish cooking the steak. Just put it on my plate. Have, yeah. I'm just, Have the cow <laughs> look at the stove in fear and then bring it to me. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But nowadays, I have more than enough things to occupy me yeah. to the point where I don't have to rush. So, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. From there, uh, apparently, <laughs> you can't get through Cyberpunk without having some kind of problem. Yeah. Apparently, there are a lot of problems in the EU doing the upgrade from the PS4 slash Xbox, or specifically the PS4 version, some on the Xbox as well, to the newer generation version. And apparently, it has to do with, like, if you bought the disc in Germany, but you're connected to the Austrian 
the store. Well, Austria, it's not a country anymore. The, the, the <laughs> Nor- uh, or, or maybe it is. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about Europe. The <laughs> I'm French American. Store, I'm so sorry. Right, the, you bought it in Germany, and now you live in France, and you're trying to connect to the French version of the store. Mm-hmm. That that version will then like verify your disc and go, oh, no, that's not a French version. You can't have the upgrade. Um, apparently, this was already known way ahead of time because it was like on CD Projekt Red's tech support website it, mm-hmm. it it laid this out as a scenario that was not going to work for upgrading mm-hmm. um still though as a game where literally sony was offering un unqualified returns for like three or four months i think that they should have a little bit more leeway in upgrading because yeah. you know the it's, it's it's been a few years and we've forgotten but like this was a debacle like a huge oh yeah problem. It was an like embarrassment yeah like it's starting to shape up now but oh my god like this was probably one of the worst game launches of all time for something that had been hyped for like seven years yeah and then it came out was just like oh this is garbage uh, yeah oh it was their it was their game to win and they f- fucked up it was like a mass effect andromeda except that only took like two years to to make or three years yeah. or whatever it looked like it only took two years to make um so yeah if you're in uh if you're in the eu watch out for that i don't know we'll see if they fix it um and then also i don't know there was a i i wanted to put this in um kotoku kind of had an article where they were talking about how like the gist of the article is like thank you very much for the upgrades we really would have appreciated if at the end of your live stream you had shown us what the new roadmap looks like. Yeah. Like, when are you now? Or or at least if you had just said, at this, the next thing we'll be working on is adding new content to the yeah. game. And we expect that to happen sometime in the next quarter. Like, you don't have to tell me a date. You don't have to put a thing with an hour that a thing is going to come out on the screen. But just, like, declaring the intentions of, like, what comes next for this a game again where it's like every time they promise something they slipped past the release date Mm -hmm. like i don't need you to to come in and tell me exactly the thing but like is the next thing that you're going to continue working on patches like this that add slightly new improvements um and then further optimization bug fixes and stuff or are you shifting into because there should be a team that's working on dlc i believe they said last year that part of their team is working specifically on dlc i forgot but unless I'm mistaken, I don't know if they ever officially canceled it or not. But also, this game is supposed to have a multiplayer mode. God. <laughs> let's just, supposed to come let's out like, just hope that they just like six forgot months about that. Yeah. After the game came out. So it's kind of disappointing that as part of this, that again, it was such a slapdash impromptu thing. Again, it's nice that they put it out. And it's always nice when there's a big, you know, and it's out today yeah. thing. Um, but it also would have been nice if they had given us some indication of just like what's next, yeah. where are we going from here? Um, so yeah. Uh, speaking of where we're going from here, we're not going to be going to the Wii U or 3DS eShops, that's for sure. Oh no. Uh, yeah, Nintendo announced that the Wii U and 3DS uh, shops are going to be shut down in late March 2023. Um, but that's not the whole thing because. As of May 23rd of this year, apparently Nintendo is going to end support for adding funds to a Nintendo eShop account using a credit card. Okay. I assume that from that point forward, you might still be able to add credits using a gift card. Mm -hmm. Probably more their intention is that um, you're just supposed to spend the funds that you have there already before the time runs out and you can't do anything anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Part of this is that the uh, the shop is still going to you're still going to be able to download stuff that you have previously purchased, but the biggest thing here is the fact that the 3DS and the Wii U represent the last time that Nintendo had the uh, a virtual console for buying backwards uh, the older games, yeah. right? For just straight up buying them, and with the Switch, it's the new switch online subscription service right yeah. so you can't just buy metroid you got to sign up for this monthly thing and i i don't necessarily have the biggest problem with it but i know a lot of people do um there is however um there was an faq that they put out that had a really kind of i don't know i feel like it was a weirdly uh 
kind of passive aggressive statement where the question was once it is no longer possible to purchase software in the Nintendo eShop on Wii U and the Nintendo 3DS family of systems, many classic games for past platforms will cease to be available for purchase anywhere. Will you make classic games available to own some other way? If not, then why does not Nintendo have an obligation to preserve its classic games by continually making them available for purchase? The answer was, across our Nintendo Switch Online membership plans, over 130 classic games are currently available in growing libraries for various legacy systems. The games are often enhanced with new features such as online play. We think this is an effective way to make classic content easily available to a broad range of players. Within these libraries, new and longtime players can not only find games, blah, 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 blah. We currently have no plans to offer classic content in other ways. Mm -hmm. So it appears... I, I, I don't know that anybody would be shocked by this because, like... It's always kind of been Nintendo's stance on things. Nintendo has a huge library of truly classic games that people would love to get access to. Mm -hmm. And they seem to have absolutely no interest whatsoever in actually letting people buy them or play them or yeah. do whatever. Like, I don't understand the, like, well, we could make money off of this, but we're not going to mentality. But that might just be because I'm in a filthy capitalist society. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, they've kind of always been like this. So you, you can't be super shocked yeah also i mean like i don't know some people got some shit for this last year but like hey man emulators are a thing yeah. like I, I can just go download dragon quest and play it right now mm -hmm. i've got i've got a raspberry pi i've got an nes classic that can be jailbroke or i've got a computer and just about any computer can play nes games i've got a freaking handheld raspberry pi around here somewhere yeah my phone has an emulator on it like there are a lot of ways to steal nintendo games and nintendo does not seem to care Nintendo does not seem to prosecute individual people for running ROMs of Battletoads. Yeah. They seem to go after the websites that host them and try to take them down. If you've got a web torrent, a BitTorrent client, you can fucking find packs of these things everywhere. Yeah. Um, and that honestly is me endorsing piracy because like then make them available. Like, yeah, they don't want to sell it to you. There's only so much you can do. Yeah. Like if I wanted to play, ninja gaiden and it's not on your switch online service then like i don't feel bad because i would have given you money for it but you didn't let me yeah and the idea that they keep parsing out these games at such a slow rate and such a slow rate weirdest God. games too like they choose really strange games a lot of times like tough enough uh, for the like super nintendo yeah it's got the guy in the front that says hey punk are you and it's got the tough enough on it's like what yeah. this one why why um one dude really liked it at nintendo and was like we have to yeah so i don't know this is a this is not this is not on it, it's funny because the next story that i have is basically a list of um like responses from japanese twitter uh about this mm -hmm. and they're all very they're outraged they're just like you know um you know i'm able to trust sony more than nintendo ridiculous this makes me only want to buy it from steam uh at the end you won't even be able to play anymore that's terrifying and it's just like guys this is nintendo like i don't yeah, know what to tell you standard shit yeah like i don't know if it's like young people who haven't been through this and they're getting stung for the first time mm -hmm. but like i learned to stop touching the stove because my hand has calluses and shit on it from the number of times i've been like you can trust nintendo oh no you can't trust anybody ever yep. for any reason like if you want a good library of NES games, spend the forty dollars and get a Raspberry Pi together with a Bluetooth controller. Yeah, it, I mean, honestly, it's it's the same. It's the equivalent of like going to a like used video game store and just buying the originals mm -hmm. because it's not like Nintendo's going to make money off of the resale. Yeah, of the like original cartridges for those games. So like, it's the same thing. Yeah, like, whatever. Also, I mean, you know, not to. Not to go too far out on a on a on an anti capitalist leftist high horse or anything, mm -hmm. but like there comes also a time when you've made an appropriate amount of money, and at this point we are talking about game archival, yeah, uh, and like your ability to keep selling me Super Mario Brothers forever when I personally have bought it probably a dozen times in different ways shapes and forms like you don't get to keep the thing for infinity and i know you know the 80s were oh god 1988 1990 it's like 30 30 years ago it's been 30 years <laughs> it's been like a little over 30 years since yeah. like the original nes came out in the united states was 1987 i believe yeah um but like 
you don't just get to keep selling me Metroid for $5 forever. Because honestly, from the way that games are priced in... Metroid should cost a quarter yeah. or less yeah. or nothing. Like, I should get Metroid for free. I should be able to open a browser window and play the original Metroid yeah. gratis. And you should just show me an ad and take my point zero zero one cents AdSense dollars, and yeah. that is what you deserve oh, for 100%. Metroid. Yeah, no, I agree completely. <laughs> um, but that, for some reason, reminded me uh, that yesterday at work, one of my coworkers asked the entire room of like our crew, mm. I was like, were any of you... Uh, uh, old enough to play original PlayStation games. Ah! <laughs> and, I just, and I was the oldest person there and I was just, ah! <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> oh, Bobola. Yeah. Oh, booby. <laughs> like, uh, oh, my I started with the Nintendo. I started with the Atari 2600. That's what I, I told John <laughs> that story and he's like, yeah, I started with the Atari and I was like, look, I, you know, yeah. I my, I know my family had like a ColecoVision or a Commodore 64 or something, but like yeah, yeah, it's like <sighs> arcade games at a bowling alley was honestly where I actually started. But yeah, like, yeah, uh, but yeah, it's crazy to me that they were just like, <laughs> yeah, were you guys old enough? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I just I swear to God, I uh, it, it just it makes me. Uh, I know it's a thing. I feel like I blame Matt McMuscles fully for it, but mm -hmm. just like that one Simpsons quote with Abe Simpson that it'll happen no, it to you. you. Yeah. It's just like, you know, <laughs> I used to be with it, but then they changed what oh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> it hurts so much. Uh, that'll happen to everybody. It'll yeah, happen to everybody. Yeah, it'll yeah. happen to everybody. I think it's, I personally think it's fascinating because I get to remember in my lifetime what it was like when I had to like, go to the skating rink and stand on top of a milk crate to play Tempest. Mm -hmm. And then like now the monitor that I have in front of me is a higher resolution with more brightness than like the lights in my house when I was a kid. It's, <laughs> it's so weird that I, mean, I don't want to turn this into the old guy podcast, <laughs> but, Back in but my it, day. it's so weird for me to think of like the movie theater we used to go to had an arcade in front of it. And so mm -hmm. we go to the movie theater early and we play in the arcade until it's time to watch a movie. And then we go to the movies and watch a movie. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even amphitheater seating in the movie theater. Nope. Um, and then, uh, now like you can go into a movie theater and it has a recliner chair and a table so you can eat your food <laughs> and, and the pre-show has a thing where you can scan a QR code with your phone and play a fucking game while you're waiting for the previews to start. And it's like, what is <laughs> the, like the future? <laughs> Living you in the future. Don't, yeah, like you Living all just future. don't understand that you have so much more than we could have ever possibly thought of. Yep. Although having said that, I miss having arcades. I uh, yeah. This is the this threatens to go into a, a whole other podcast so yeah. we're we'll just gonna keep on moving yeah. anyway a japanese twitter is apparently not super happy with this uh the one thing that is not going to be to be immediately shut down apparently is the pokemon bank hell yeah uh pokemon. which was a thing where you paid five dollars a year and then you could like store pokemon in this bank and see so like if you went from like the previous version to the next version of pokemon then you could download your leveled six billion pikachu mm -hmm. into the new version of the game for some reason i don't really understand how this works this is more of a public service announcement than yeah. anything else um though apparently uh when the eShop shuts down, they will stop charging to use the Pokemon Bank, but it will remain operational mm -hmm. for an amount of time, question mark, question mark, question mark, yeah. where they said that basically uh, the, the period in which the freeze service will end is not decided. Uh, check back at a later date, basically. Okay. So, you know, keep an eye on that if you're still playing Nintendo DS Pokemon games. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, we'll let you, you know, right hey, hey, judge. I'm just talking about fucking all the Nintendo games I got in my house. You know, I, I got the giant monitor. I'll still play Donkey Kong on it. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> I'll get foot. Um, in other Nintendo news, some data miners have found something really interested, interesting in Pokemon Legends Arceus. I think that this Kotaku article is a bit uh, uh, overzealous, but apparently, uh, data miners have found have taken the Pokemon uh, Arceus 
ROM mm-hmm. and disconnected the camera and flown it into a part of the sky that you can't get to and found this modern room full of modern furniture mm-hmm. and like a literal switch with Pokemon uh, EV. Let's go EV and let's go Pikachu, the one that they sold that had yeah. the little faces on it. Um, the, most people seem to think that this is just the room from the beginning before you get taken to the yeah. land. Um, but it's interesting that, but the, the counterpoint to that is that there's like a lot of detail in this room that isn't really shown and you spend like all of two seconds at the beginning of the game in that room before you get sent back in time. So, uh, the idea that they actually created full on models of flat screen TVs and Nintendo switches and stuff in this room is kind of a little odd, but who knows? I mostly just wanted to, um, I mostly just wanted to show you because I know that you liked that game quite a bit. So. I do. Yeah. Are you still playing it? I am. Yeah. yeah? Uh, my brother texts me all the time. He got it day of and he beat it in like th- three or four days. Which uh-huh. is like rolled credits on it. Where are you at? And I'm like, I got a mime <laughs> junior <laughs> and I just want to hang out with him. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you get, did you get the big Ponita, the giant Ponita? Uh, uh, the, uh, the the big aggro one, yeah, like the, the alpha, alpha one? one. No, not yet. I I haven't. I don't. I just haven't fucked with any of the alphas. I just I just keep collecting everything. Yeah, I get it. Uh, let's see. From there, um, this is kind of an interesting story. This is more. I don't know. This is an advertiser content or anything. But I actually ordered one of these. I'm going to see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been having uh, just, just a quick side note. I've been having. I was playing Sifu uh, the other day, and I noticed this when I was playing Michael in the King of Fighters game last week. Also, I was playing Sifu that I think I'm starting to de- develop either um, early arthritis or some repetitive stress injuries in my hands from c- games that want you to jam on a controller super fast. Yeah. Because my fingers have gotten to a point where they feel kind of stiff, and they <laughs> don't always – they're not as responsive as they used to be. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be getting some compression gloves to see if I can – get through that but like um but i was looking at like options and apparently this is a kind of a i don't know if this is a new thing but this this thing for the switch that's called the may flash magic ns and it's a little dongle that you can buy and they're like 20 dollars on amazon Mm -hmm. and you plug it into your switch and then you can sync it to an xbox one or a playstation 4 or 5 or 3 controllers you can literally use those controllers if you're more comfortable with them on the are you more comfortable with them a little bit like I mean uh, the reason that I kind of wanted to try it out was because I think that these controllers are slightly more comfortable mm-hmm. they're kind of all about the same the main thing is that this would allow me to like let w- if we're playing a two player game one person could use the switch pro controller that I have and the other person could use a PlayStation 5 controller yeah. as opposed to the the joy cons in the little plastic I do thing. hate the joy cons in the little plastic thing um, and apparently this works for a bunch of different things you can use on like ps3s or windows or the genesis minis yeah um so which you know it's mostly just like hey for 20 bucks like it's an it'd probably be a good thing to have around yeah for sure you can check that out uh let's see in other controller news this is kind of interesting Fortnite has added um gyro uh, aiming and flick stick controls so uh you know how in splatoon you can like make subtle adjustments with the controller we're using the motion controls you Mm -hmm. can like line up a shot but then you can use the motion controls to make like really fine adjustments uh they've added this support into Fortnite, and it's kind of it's really uh they they hired a person who apparently made a mod that did it on to do this because it's really smartly implemented where like by default uh the gyro aiming doesn't turn on unless you unless you go into iron sights Mm -hmm. so like if you're just running around in the world you're not like fucking making yourself throw up exactly uh, but if you then like zoom in and you can use the right stick to kind of line it up and then use the motion controls to make like a real precision shot. Yeah. Watching the video of a guy doing this is like, oh, yeah, I'm never playing Fortnite. Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> um, in addition, there's another uh, they show later on. There's a couple of different ways to do this. Apparently, you can have it that way by default, or you can have it always turned on. Mm -hmm. Apparently, the guy said if you have it always turned on, you should. uh, There should be a button that you map to basically like toggle on and off. Um, But you can just have the the gyro aiming turned on the entire time. The other thing is uh, remapping the right stick to flicks 
which were like instead of using it to control the the instead of using it to directly control the camera mm -hmm. you just like flick it to one side or another and it'll just immediately turn you to whichever direction you flick the right stick in mm -hmm. based on where you're looking uh, this does have apparently the downside of not being able to actually control the camera without using the gyro controls. But the whole thing seems like a like, yeah, I mean, if you got really used to that, it seems like you would have a little bit more advantage, hella advantage. Yeah. yeah, to being able to just like instantly turn because they talk about how like if you're getting shot and you see the little thing come up showing the direction that you're getting shot from. Yeah. And then you just flick the stick in that direction. You will just immediately turn. And then if you were to hold down the aim button and use the motion controls, you could just zone in super quick on the person that's shooting oh, yeah. at you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty cool. They put out a uh, they put a little video showing it all working um, and it seems really slick. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty cool. slick. So, uh, let's see. In other Fortnite news, uh, get get. Well, I was gonna say guess who's in Fortnite, but I just pulled up the thing so you can see exactly. I know who's in now. Fortnite. Uh, I'm psychic. Nathan, Ask me. Nathan Drake and Chloe are in Fortnite now because everything's in Fortnite. Yeah, but it's like tom holland nathan drake it's both okay it's both the movie version and the old game version um they're really weird looking everybody's in fortnite now i mean you know. yeah there's a, that's a lot i just wish that i just wish that fortnite was a game that i wanted to play yeah <laughs> there's so many i mean there's like it's so funny i remember when we played it for rage select and it was not the multiplayer it was just the single player oh it yeah was like a demo for it and we were like oh, i guess this is fun yep and then, <laughs> and then like a month later they came out with the multiplayer yeah. and it was just like oh everybody everybody loves it um yeah yeah it's pretty cool i mean for god's sake they put they put fucking zendaya in that game because she was in dune yeah <laughs> so <laughs> um i mean yeah. it was a good 20 minutes of dune that she was in it yeah. oh yeah she's only at the like very five end five and a half seconds yeah yeah uh let's see uh activision has confirmed that oh, this is all but pretty much known but that this year's call of duty is going to be a sequel to the 2019 modern warfare reboot that they um that they put out. Uh, it's also going to have a really big update to uh, Warzone, uh, including a version that's supposed to compete with the Battlefield 2042 Hazard Zone mode, which is things where teams of three, kind of in a battle royale thing, are competing against both a certain number of other teams, but also AI mm -hmm. trying to collect stuff. It all sounds exhausting to me, but yeah. um, the thing that I liked about this was that they said that it's... Um, uh, it's supposed to have like a morality system to it. And then also, this is from a VG247 article. The report also stated the loss of limbs and more realistic gore would be featured in the game. Ooh, party. And characters will react to incidents in the game in a more believable way. Uh, I'm all in favor of having people's heads explode into RoboCop styles, uh, RoboCop levels of blood uh, when they get shot. Uh, I mean, that could make it more fun or horrifying. Uh, or both, you know. Who's to say? I'm into it. Yeah. I'm not. I mean, I <laughs> won't play it, but like I'm into I'm into them making that update. I'm not. Yeah. I'm into the concept. Yeah. Not necessarily the execution. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. It's Call of Duty. I don't yeah, understand Yeah, I haven't it. played a Call of Duty game in a long time. But they're still at the top selling games like a few weeks yeah and yet i've never met somebody that's like played it i don't know it well, you know like what? jason jason yeah. murphy is fucking into it but i firmly put that on his brother yeah. like that he's playing with his you know his friends and family right it's not like jason was just like you know what i'm a call of duty guy now because i'm so into call of duty yeah it's more just like ah it's fun and i don't have I also get the impression that Jason just doesn't have time to play any game for an extended period of time. Yeah. So you can play Warzone for an hour and feel like you did something as mm -hmm. opposed to playing, you know, Cyberpunk 2077 for an hour and feeling like you did nothing at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that's fair. Yeah. Uh, in other multiplayer news, apparently somebody got their hands on a prototype of the Halo Infinite Forge mode. 
So I don't know if you're familiar with Forge mode, Amanda, but mm -hmm. in the previous Halos, you were able to basically, it's kind of a, uh, it's like a light level editor where yeah. you can add assets and you can kind of yeah, create I new rules and stuff. Um, Halo Infinite, it wasn't ready when they launched, but apparently um, uh, it's either close to coming out or coming soon. But this leaker that got this kind of went through and showed a lot of the different assets, a lot of different ways you can change like the day night cycle for certain maps, hmm. add weather add lots of different that's cool um items in fact some of the stuff that they added in were swarm which were the bad guys from the first halo one through three mm -hmm. um i don't believe they've been in the halo verse since then but um uh there's a mode there's a very popular mode uh i believe it's called infection in halo where it's like everybody starts out with shotguns and one person has a sword and if you kill a person if the sword guy kills one of the shotgun guys then that shotgun guy respawns as a sword guy mm -hmm. and it's basically l zombie rules last man standing yeah. wins type huh. of thing yeah um so it seems like that i don't know they might be able to make something about that but yeah uh, if you have guys haven't already seen this video um, it's a little, a little technical, but it seems like it's got a lot more going on than the previous forge modes did. If this article is to be believed. So, uh, let's see. I think we're just about out of time. I think we're just about out of time and I think we're going to leave it there because we're going to move over to the, uh, the corporate uh, intrigue and no. or bitching about NFTs. Uh, oh, so, good. Yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna leave all that for part two. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, we're gonna take a break, but we'll see you back here in just a minute. Huzzah. And Amanda, I, uh, I, I, we we're going to have some stories about corporate malfeasance, but I decided to take them out because honestly, it's just more of the fucking same. So yeah. uh, in, in place of those, uh, I, I was outside and I just saw that uh, Kurt Cobain's daughter is dating Tony Hawk's son. Oh my God. <laughs> which is the most 90s things I, I've ever beautiful. heard in my entire life. Uh, so that, that, that'll that be your update in place of Activision, Microsoft, and Ubisoft being a bunch of jerks. It was mostly just the standard jerkiness of jerks. You already know their, their shit. Yeah. Like the, the Ubisoft story was just like, oh, the people that work at Ubisoft are like, hey, can we, can we fix this horrible corporate culture that we have? And they're just like, yes, we'll do everything. Mm -hmm. And then nothing has happened. They're like, for what? Like, I can't hear you over my corporate jargon. Yeah. 16, 16 months worth of like doing nothing. Uh, anyway, let's talk about more important things, Amanda. Yeah. Like Wordle. Let's talk about Wordle. Wordle. Uh, I know that everybody, I don't. I, I'm over Wordle because everybody finally got all the way into Wordle. So <laughs> uh, I think, wait, did you do it? Ever? I never Wordled. You never I Wordled. Never, never no. Wordled. Okay. Um, a few weeks back, we had the big news that the uh, Wordle was bought by the New York Times mm -hmm. and put on their website, and uh, apparently the the censorship has begun, Amanda. We have to... The, the <sighs> They're censorship. changing things now. They're changing things. Uh, yeah, I mean, apparently this is just like... New York Times has a thing with their like crossword, and it's like you can't put offensive words in your crossword. Right. And for here, it's like... The, the story is so overblown because it's like uh new york times is censoring wordle and what this is is not that like one day you were going to load up wordle and it was going to have like smegma was the word in wordle or something yeah it was more just like if you typed uh if if you typed in fucks for wordle yeah and you hit submit it would be like no 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 yeah. No, we're not even going to consider that. Like, it's not that. Trust me, it's not bitch. The yeah. word for today is not bitch. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah. that's the word I like to use when I start. Um, the, just talking about Wordle reminds me of that Chuck Tingle came out with a book. Uh huh. Would you like to know the title of it? Oh, is it a Wordle sex book? The physical manifestation of Wordle <laughs> pounds my butt as a slightly frustrating but ultimately rewarding and meditative daily routine. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Chuck Tingle. How many are there? Is there somebody that's doing a podcast where all they do is just read all of Chuck Tingle's You books have no <laughs> idea how often like I, I uh, was uh, blessed with the opportunity to introduce my entire co-working crew oh, right. to Chuck Tingle. Because they're all so young and, and they don't also, know. Yeah, and they were, uh, everyone loved it. Yes. And um, like, because I just read off a bunch of titles mm-hmm. and they loved the idea. And I was like, do you guys want to start a book club? <laughs> and they were like, not at all. I like the way that Chuck Tingle books are named like, the, the, they're the closest uh, equivalent is uh, anime series that just explain exactly yeah, what the anime series is the, about. Yeah, yeah. Like that time I got, uh, that time I died, I got reincarnated as a, as a slime and like the physical manifestation of Wordle pounded my butt on a daily basis yeah. are both like equivalent yeah, in just like yeah. telling you exactly what you're going to get. Yeah. There's, there's uh, no question. I love it. You don't I need to read it's... a synopsis. <laughs> it's fine. It's great. Um, but this, is, this isn't even, this isn't even the most shocking Wordle news that we have. Yeah. Because apparently people on the internet don't have anything to do with their fucking lives um last week there was an nba player carl anthony towns Mm -hmm. uh who posted on wordle uh, his wordle score and then like (laughs) and and then people on twitter were like because you know if it's like it'll say like oh this is wordle 207 right and so you know what the word is and so you know his his wordle thing was three tries and he got it Mm -hmm. and then people looked at it and they were like hold on there's actually no combination of letters that could lead you to the second guess based on what this word is and what you typed into the first one and i'm just like I'm sorry. Are we gatekeeping fucking Wordle? Yeah, that's like, weird. You know what you could do with Wordle is look up what the day, what the word is from other people. Yeah, type it into Wordle and get it in one every day and be like, I'm the greatest. Yeah. Um, but apparently this led to a whole thing uh, because people accused him of cheating. He came back and said. Actually, what happened was that I had done the guesses and I had done like some guesses like late at night and then like it switched over to the next day and then I finished it. And then when it went to uh, post it, apparently the output code that posts the thing mm-hmm. bases the number of the Wordle 230 blah on the date. And so it was literally the previous day's Wordle. Uh-huh. It was like... It was Wordle 236, yeah. and not Wordle 237. And then it turns out that, yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. And he totally could have done it. And it's just all just like, what? Oh, yeah, what? this what is weird. Like, are we doing why does I... he have to even defend it? I don't know. Because Twitter, I guess? Like, I don't, I, I don't have any idea. I don't know. All I know is that my Facebook page right now is just everyone that I know that's over 40 yeah. posting Wordle and nothing else. Yeah. And then I, being like, oh, I'm really proud. I guessed it in one. And it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what that means. What I thought about doing was taking the little boxes mm-hmm. from the Rage Select, Wordle Select channel on the Discord server and making every one of them into like a pornographic cartoon of yeah. some sort uh, because that would be more entertaining than, than, I mean, like it was fine for a few days and it was just like. Like I don't mind people eh. playing a game that they enjoy, whatever, yeah, but it's what just, it's just weird how much everyone is like sharing their results. Mm-hmm. How it's like a thing. Yeah, I don't I, know. It's just, yeah. You guessed a word. Congratulations. Yeah. I keep half. I feel like when I open up YouTube now, like half the recommended videos to me are like, here's the best first word yeah. to try in Wordle. And then there's like, here's the next video. And it's like, actually, th- we did our own tests. And that's not the right first word to guess. And where it's like, if you're if you're meta, if there's a meta for Wordle, yeah. we're always starting with like the word that the Internet has told you is the best optimized for Wordle. What the hell? Yeah, like it's I, a bit much. I don't know. It just doesn't. I mean, you know, again, play it. It's fine. I guess it's just this story about like this fucking NBA guy is cheating at Wordle, and it's like, oh my god. Yeah. What oh a dear monster. lord. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's drag him for the love of God. <laughs> um. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, speaking of things that are way worse than that, uh, apparently we got some. 
we got some new information about the Team 17 Worms, not Wordle, I almost said Wordle, Worms NFT thing that happened. So just as a quick refresher for anybody who doesn't know, a few weeks back, um, Team 17 put out a thing where they were like, we're going to sell NFTs of Worms, Mm -hmm. uh, the Worms from the game Worms. And... Uh, they got a lot of pushback from the internet, yeah, as is the way you do. Yeah. But they also, Team 17 is like a publisher that publishes like indie stuff. Mm-hmm. So like the developers of Overcooked and like a bunch of other games, like they put out statements saying like, we do not condone this. We don't like this. We said, nah. And within 24 hours, they basically reversed course and gone like, nah, actually, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Um, some new information has come out, which I think puts a lot of interesting it puts a different spin on the well maybe it's just the spin that we all should have known um uh, but i guess it just depends on how much you assume that ever all corporate culture is in bad faith and shitty mm-hmm. um apparently like throughout the process of getting ready to do this every person inside of team 17 that was not upper management was like this is a bad idea you should not do this like the community managers were like please do not do this i do not want to have to put up with the fucking firestorm of when you put this shit online uh but apparently management apparently management at team 17 is not great there's part of this it was a uh, there was a, an article I recommend everybody go read on Eurogamer that kind of goes over the whole thing. But like, in the in the PC gaming uh, PC gamer article that kind of summarized some of this stuff, apparently there's like the CEO of Team Seventeen is this woman named Debbie. Apparently, like, um, there's a lot of stories of like they didn't give you the time or the funds to make the thing, and mm-hmm. so you did what you could, and then when you put it out. Debbie's going to drag you into her office and yell at you for 45 minutes about why didn't you do it better? Yeah. And it's like because the, the money wasn't there and the time wasn't there. Uh, there was also a thing where they said that like at Christmas time, she makes the employees wrap her family's gifts like uh, on their the own fuck, Debbie? time. Yeah, yeah. Apparently Debbie's like what a bitch. Apparently Debbie kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Not a fan of Debbie. It just it makes me think of um uh uh, Joan Cusack in, in a family oh, value. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what about Debbie? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I recommend everybody go over this, but, you know, because I, I think that in a lot of times, you know, it makes me. it makes me just so glad that we live in a world where I haven't seen a story like this with the with the words devolver or digital in them Mm -hmm. because a lot of i feel like a lot of times we think of these smaller indie studios like you know it's like i don't know an expectation maybe that like activision is gonna oh they're definitely gonna be shitty to their employees ubisoft is definitely gonna be bad to their employees like i don't know team 17 the worms guys there's a little indie studio they got overcooked and like all these little indie games like it's they're they're gonna obviously but no debbie's ruining it for everybody apparently debbie's just fucking it all up apparently debbie's just just making it bad for everybody. Damn so, it, Debbie. damn it, Debbie. Come on. We hear it rage like say, Debbie, De- you could do better. Yeah, you do better, do- Debbie. Be better, Debbie. Um, I also think that Debbie was in a list of, we had a few, like a month ago, I think we got a list of like the top paid video game people in the industry. And I'm pretty sure. Debbie out here gir- girl bossing? Is that what you're trying to say? I just, she got like a 200 million dollars or something Fuck, like that. Do you know what I could do uh, with 200 million dollars? <laughs> Do you know how many uh, worms NFTs I could buy with two hundred million dollars? I'd settle for for one one million dollars. One worm MF- NFT? Actually, that's not even true. You could you could buy my loyalty for like two hundred k at this yeah, point. For real. I'm like, uh, I'm just... it's like I can I can fucking sell my house. I can leave. I can buy a new house and retire, and then we're yeah. done. Like, do you need to do you need a new place to hawk NFTs? Do you have two hundred thousand dollars worth of actual money like u.s currency Tax and not free <laughs> cryptocurrency yeah uh by the way this is the part where i complain about nfts for a while one of the other things that happened last week was that a bunch of magic the gathering people um this is a little less video game and a little bit more um a little bit more just magic just yeah. in-store cards apparently there's this group called M- the mtg dow uh dow is a specific nft term for mm-hmm. a distributed thing anyway um they decided that they were going to launch a new nft project where people could buy nfts of magic cards um 
And then they were going to use that as like an entry into games. Like you had to like have the NFT in order to play the. It's and, and not entirely clear exactly what the plan was because it, I don't know. Like I read it, and it was like, well, you have to have the NFT for the cards in order to gain entry into like tournaments or whatever. And I'm like, guys, I'm pretty sure that there are plenty of Magic the Gathering tournaments that do not require you to own a fucking NFT yeah. in order to play in them. Like I'm pretty sure that just about every comic book shop in this universe yeah. has like a Thursday where you can go down and play Magic the Gathering. If that's what you're into. Yeah. Um, but these fucking geniuses, uh, th- th- they 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 weren't gonna like. They weren't looking to mint NFTs of like things like the cards. They wanted to just straight up mint the cards with like the art and the description and like you know property of Wizards of the Coast. Yeah. And so. Um, uh, th- they did say that they were going to require that. Uh, th- this is <laughs> <laughs> this blows my mind because then they said that they were going to like to try to get around the whole copyright thing. They were going to say that like you had to physically own like a card if you were going to mint it, or you had to own the card in like the digital game in order to mint an NFT of it. But it's just uh, okay. like, but that doesn't invalidate international copyright law yeah. where you're attempting you're attempting to like mint and or like secure something that is the intellectual property of a company like you can't just say now i have the nft of this thing yeah. that is somebody else's so wizards of the coast sent them shockingly a cease and desist order it was actually very nice to yeah. be honest uh because like the the whole thing They're was like, like please don't do that your enthusiasm for magic the gathering is evident and appreciated the team at wizards is also impressed by the work you've put into developing a new format for playing magic the gathering unfortunately your intended use of wizards intellectual property including its trademarks and copyrights would be unlawful you appear to be operating under the mistaken assumption that the project would be legal because you would allow the reproduction of magic cards in the form of nfts only by a player who who has purchased a physical card, a card on Arena, or a card on MT, uh, MTG Go, MT Go, which I assume is a um, like a phone version or something. Probably. This is not correct. It is the exclusive right of the copyright owner to reproduce the copyright of work, such as Magic Card, in any format. While there is an exception in the copyright statute for making backup or archival copy in some circumstances, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, down yeah. the line. Um, uh, so... That, oh, yeah, that was the other thing that I was making me make that noise before is like, if you own a physical magic card, why the fuck do you need an NFT of the fucking same card that you already own? You I own mean, it. Yeah. Like, if you own the digital version of a card on the digital version of the game, like, no matter what they did, they can't gatekeep access to the online game game in fact i can even see a thing where it was like let's say that they decided that they were going to do a physical in-person thing and then like some kid shows up and is like oh i love magic i want to play in this and they're like where's your nft and they're like i don't have one and they're like well you can't be here and i'm like that's a bad look too of just being like get the fuck out of here what do you mean you even spent cryptocurrency on some bullshit um the thing that is the most interesting that I think everybody should go read is the uh, the MTG DAO uh, Twitter account. Um, like their when they they posted the, this tweet, Wizards of the Coast sent us a very polite email. Uh, they also Wizards of the Coast intimated that they might be doing NFTs in the future. And again, it's like we're you can't do that because we might do that, and we own the property that you're trying to use. Yeah. Um, but they this this. The semi unhinged thread that goes on and on and on and on and on about how Wizards of the Coast is NGMI or not going to make it. That like uh, I don't think they have anything to worry about. Uh, you know, like <sighs> the things, <laughs> the things in this thread is just I don't know. It's like. This is like, oh, your old uh, idea about how people own things in the world is completely outdated. And like, if you knew what was good for you, you would be jumping on this train and fully endorsing us. And that's why you're outdated and you're going to go out of business because everybody knows the future. That's some straight up like, uh, uh, like (sighs) consumerism um, gaslighting. Yes. Like, oh, actually, if you just let us make money off of your stuff. Yeah, like, you'd be more in the now. Like, he, here's the tweet thread. 
of them talking. Jesus Christ, that's this. a lot longer than I would ever. I would never read that. Yeah. I would look at that and block them. <laughs> yes. E- 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 yeah. It's again, it's just that standard crypto thing and I'm going to keep flogging it. Yeah. Mostly because I feel like I I I've, I've never been a, a pos- I've never been the biggest position staker here on Rage Select, Yeah. but like you must actively resist this shit. Hell yeah. Because they are not going to stop trying like until the entire market crashes and it's becomes illegal to do this, which even then I don't think they would stop. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to keep trying to shove this shit into places that it has no reason to be, does not belong. Because guess what? There is already a way to buy magic cards digitally in the in a game yeah. run by the people who make the magic yeah. cards game. You could buy... I mean, like, there is no advantage to this no matter what number of buzzwords that you put together on it. Um, so, also just the sheer unbridled chutzpah of like yeah you know we're just gonna we're just gonna fucking take them there are yeah we're just gonna make them into nfts they're They're mine now they belong to me now and it's like oh what about copyright it's like well it's not it's it's not the i'm just rewriting the rules of copyright so that it works for my benefit i have to remember with nfts is that generally speaking they tend to be links that link to a thing that they don't even have like a it's not like a picture. It's like a proof of ownership that like specifically refers to like a link to a an image or something like that. Yeah. So if like the other side of that link changes the image to something else, then what you own is whatever is at the end of that URL, not necessarily like specifically the set of pixels. Yeah. I just I it just I jabata. Ha ba da ba da ba da ba. That's my commentary. Mm, ha ba da ba da ba da. Um, let's see from there. Uh, th- this is tangentially related, but apparently you got to watch out. You got to watch out for mods these days. Yeah. Um, so there's a game called city skylines, which is an indie game that does SimCity city way better than SimCity city currently does. Uh-huh. Uh, good stuff. I think we played it on like a Sunday stream one time or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has mods and apparently one of the modders this is in tw- 2021 some modder going by the name of chaos launched a redesigned version of one of the mods called harmony which is like a loader for other mods mm-hmm. and then also had some other uh mods that it, it's unclear to me whether they were like just rip offs of somebody else's thing or whatever but apparently the way that those mods were being loaded meant that you could very easily go in and replace that mod for just like unauthorized code that was then going to be run. So you could literally update the workshop file to run like a virus or a crypto miner or whatever. And then the mod installer would just be like, oh, here's an update for that thing. Let me get the new code and start running it directly on your machine. Yeah. Um, which is a no good. Yeah. This is a little skeevy. No good. So apparently, um, this has been uh, removed. Like, they've just removed all of these, um, which is good. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like, watch out. Watch, yeah. watch out for, for Be mods. Be careful. Yeah. Uh, let's see. In other uh, uh, PC gaming news, apparently the Steam Deck is nearing 300 verified games. Yay. Uh, as games need to... Um, Get be it. verified in order to run correctly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's a whole bunch. What was that? More than 150 games this week. Uh, there's a lot going on. I was actually kind of interested because there's 190 or 60 games listed that are found to be incompatible and have an unsupported rating. Uh, the Master Chief Collection is one. Fall Guys is another. This article has Persona 4 Golden on it, but apparently Persona 4 Golden got retested and updated, and it totally does run on I mean, there's no reason that it's like a PlayStation 2 game. So. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I. It's funny. I think that um, I'm... Uh, I'm still a little dismissive about the Steam Deck, but mostly because it just doesn't appeal to me. Right. Um, and it's harder for me to envision because I'm not on the go or in need of a portable gaming device very often. Yeah. Um, but I, I exclusively play on portable gaming devices. I'm not a, I don't really like. Sitting on a squeaky chair in front of a giant monitor. I, it just doesn't. <laughs> well, we have a projector and for some reason the use of a projector changes how I, um, game yep. like i just can't do it for long periods of time but sure. like you give me a handheld and i can just sit and play 
Yeah, no, I remember you being more excited about it. Um, yeah, I'm just poor, so it's just going to be a long time before I can actually get it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but uh, from everything I've seen, I've been watching um, some YouTube videos of people like tearing it down and looking into it and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And it seems like it's pretty well put together. Actually, uh, that segues perfectly into our next story, because if it's not that well put together, apparently Valve is partnering with uh, iFixit to spe- sell specifically Steam replacement parts. Oh. Um, if anybody is not aware, iFixit is a company that uh, I feel like the thing they're known most for is selling little um, toolkits mm-hmm. that I even have one up there that have like uh, like drivers with different tips on them that are all made for basically taking apart any computer related thing that okay. you need to take apart. Yeah. Like I use my, my iFixit driver to uh, get my, I had to take my switch pro controller apart and uh because i can uh joystick drift and oh. spray it down with like contact spray yeah, yeah. to get it working again um but yeah but i didn't know this apparently if you go to ifixit's website like they sell parts so they sell stuff like for old ipods and like vacuum cleaners and drones and shit like you can just buy like straight up like specific console parts huh. from them um like fans and batteries and stuff that can be swapped out which i've never really looked into before yeah um, but that's cool that's really cool yeah because apparently I, I watched uh uh what linus tech tips did a a full tear down on the steam deck and apparently just like taking the back off uh the like the thumbsticks are really easy to just pull out as an entire unit Mm -hmm. and then you can replace it with just like a replacement um as opposed to having to like really dig into the guts it's like a few screws off the back and then a few screws out of it you just lift the whole thing out nice apparently the one thing that's hard to get out is the battery Mm -hmm. uh the battery is incredibly difficult because it's glued right up on the back of the screen so um but yeah good news i mean it appears again um Valve charges a lot for stuff, but they do tend to get it right generally yeah. when it comes to. They hardware. seem to actually care about like making sure they're putting out a good product before they do it. Yep, exactly. Um, let's see. Uh, in other Steam news, uh, we got a an update for Baldur's Gate Three, uh, where they're putting in the Barbarian. The Barbarian. This is the uh, update seven. Uh, it was kind of interesting. Um, they. One of the things that's added in this uh, in this update is improvised weaponry, mm-hmm. which apparently the barbarian can use. Where like if you are standing close to like an item in the world, you can like use an action to just like pick that item up and then just throw it at um, another character, mm-hmm. uh, and um, it does a lot of damage. <laughs> and apparently that also goes for like the calculation on it is it's like. It's like three or four X the strength rating of the barbarian. And so you can literally grab other enemies and yeah, then like you use them to beat people Yeah, you just throw a dude at a dude. Up. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, it's funny. I We took a look at Baldur's Gate 3 a long time ago. I think Chris and I did when it first came out. Uh, and now that I have the, the new computer, I finally managed to load it back up. And I was like, oh, this is how it's supposed to look. <laughs> it looks really good now. Um, now I enjoy it. Not so much then. Yeah. I really like the Larian that's making this. They made that um, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, mm-hmm. and it looks like a really good kind of D&D game. Uh, they also had a second update, though, saying that they that the game is not going to be out this year. They think that it's probably going to be out next year um, at the earliest, but they're still, they're still working on kind of finishing everything, and then... Um, uh, and then once that's done, they have to go through and polish the entire game kind of from start to finish. So I'd rather wait and have a good game than make people uh, crunch and come out with a shitty game. Yep. Like I agree. If uh, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. We, in the same podcast that we talked about um, Cyberpunk 2077, <laughs> we can't possibly be like, this should come out sooner. I definitely agree. Yeah. I I. I have very much morphed over the years and just like, I'd rather have it working than have garbage. Yeah. But, but the reason for that is because before the PS3, more the PS4, Xbox One, but before, I don't know, like early PS3 generation, Mm -hmm. companies didn't put out games that were this fucking broken. Like a bad game, I don't know. There were, there were, you know, there were obviously like, crappy games yeah 
but they were crappy games. It wasn't like, oh, I was promised a good game and then I got a crappy game. It was different. Like, like Aliens Colonial Marines is a bad game, but the reason that it's bad is not because it was rushed out. Yeah. It's just boring and dull. Like, I don't yeah. know. Um, I don't know. It's It's just gotten worse. And so the worse it gets, the more I feel like you need to factor that in uh, to your expectations. Uh, speaking of factoring your expectations, Martha is Dead is a uh, a game that is coming out uh, next week, week after, next week, next week, next week. I have it on for you and I to play it, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, this is supposed to be, this is a first person thriller. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's supposed to, it's weird. It's like um, the premise of the game is that like there's a character uh Set in 1944 in Tuscany near the end of World War II, a woman named Martha is found dead in the game's opening, and players will take on the role of Martha's twin sister in order to understand her death during one of the darkest periods of human history. And it's apparently, like, very, very gory and graphic. Mm -hmm. Like, apparently there's a clip that's been online of them, like, cutting somebody's face off, like, taking their face off. off. Yeah. Um, But apparently they put out, uh, the developer put out a statement on Twitter saying that they are going to have to modify the PS5 and PS4 versions before release, cutting some content from the game. There's not any actual, there's not any specifics about what has, what they're cutting. Mm -hmm. um, Just that things have to be cut. Now, if I had to guess, I'd be willing to bet that this is sexual in nature. Yeah. Because Sony, I've played God of War. Sony does not appear to have any problem with blood and guts and gore and violence and shit like that. Yeah. Um, it does, though, appear to have a problem with, uh, you know, boobies and, and vajayjays, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. uh, I have to wonder whether there's some either sexual violence or just straight up like nudity. Uh, because apparently Sony don't like that no more, and um, such a prude, Sony. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happened. I kind of wish there was more information. Yeah. I feel like if you're announcing that you're going to be having to change the version that you're putting out, giving more. I don't know. It's a it's a weird tightrope to walk because on the one hand, if you give out very spe- if you give out specifics, you might end up spoiling the story yeah. of a narrative game. That is true. But on the other hand, like if people are trying to make an evaluation of where they want to buy this game, depending on content that's cut, like having some indication of what is cut, like if it's the thing where uh, there were nips and now there's no nips, and yeah. I'm like, I don't have a problem with that. If the scene is there, it just doesn't have nips in it yeah but if you're cutting like sections that might make the game better if entire they were scenes in, of the story or yeah. like some sort of interaction that would have changed your dynamic with a character or something yeah i yeah. don't know i'm kind of torn about that yeah I'd be interested to know what people think but although i do like the idea that they're like uh we had to uh take a little longer we're censoring some stuff mm-hmm. um because everyone was blasting their nips and they were like, you can't. It's too many nips. We had to take all of the boob ninjas out of Martha, out of the 1944. What is the fucking point then? <laughs> Seriously. The only reason I was playing it. Seriously. Uh, let's see. Speaking of, uh, of, of naughty words, uh, apparently on Twitch you can't have uh, your, your username on Twitch is no longer able to have references to Sexual acts, arousal, fluids, or genitalia, as well as references to hard drugs, with marijuana apparently being exempt along with alcohol and tobacco because, of course, because, like, I can't be the cocaine princess, but I can just be, like, Sir Chugs a lot or <laughs> something like that. Yes. Uh, no, I could be a ladyboy. I could be the ladyboy like, tequila slave. That is true, yeah. Unless slave falls under... Like, sexual acts oh uh the one thing it can the one thing that's really weird here is in that list there's one of them i mean you know obviously fluids yeah obviously yeah, just it. where it is in the list like when you you assume what fluids we're talking about but the idea that it's like um you know uh windex champion is like uh do i 
<laughs> do I? I mean, it's technically. I mean, uh, it was air, airport rules. I'm, How much <laughs> fluid are we allowed here? Just p- pigging his his friend, uh, uh, gravy champ. That's like, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, you man. Uh, I don't know either. I'm in the same position. It just says fluids, so I don't know. And like when it says genitalia, like. You know, if I name my character, or if I if my what Twitch are you name, naming your if if my Twitch name is the Dong Lord, yeah, right. Like, what if my last name was Dong? There are plenty of people in this <laughs> world who have that as a last name. That is not specifically a sexual uh, reference. Yeah. I could be called Jeff Dong, and I've just been lying to you guys this entire time. And I'd be like, Twitch, I... what are you saying? Are you saying that my last name isn't what I said? It yeah. Is? What if you're Donald Glover and you just want to be dong lover exactly would anybody think like, of donald glover will anybody <laughs> please think of donald glover? i'm constantly i feel like i'm the only one here also um references to hard drugs but marijuana alcohol and tobacco are fine well like, marijuana is legal in most places in not most places in a lot of places in the united states so i think at this point they just consider it the same thing as like alcohol yeah but, but like but like i don't can, know t- what about shrooms He'd be like, yeah, what? Sh- Shroomaloom, Shroomaloom, sixty nine. What if you put sixty nine because it's your name has been taken? It's a is that a sexual, sexual act? act, baby? What if my favorite number is sixty nine because I like the it way that the would six- be? What if my favorite number is four twenty? <laughs> it's, it's allowed because it's marijuana. It's, um, it's allowed. Yeah, like th- I fucking hate Twitch. I hate it when they do stuff. <laughs> it's like, why are you doing this? Like, who cares? Like, yeah. who gives two shits? Um, who cares? if I want to be cum guzzler 69. <laughs> exactly. They said, uh, the, the quote from Twitch was, we believe establishing a stronger standard is needed to cultivate a diverse, inclusive global community on Twitch. It's like, this is the exact opposite of diverse. Yeah. Like diverse means like a lot of different things, not just like... They're like, but not those different things. John Smith, 25. John Smith, 26 john smith 27 ah you sunk my battle john smith (laughs) i mean seriously i now i'm just trying to think of let's see uh boner jizz 420 that's boner jizz sexual acts boner isn't a sexual act let's say arousal fluids genitalia References to hard drugs and a sexual act. Um, uh, penis sucking, heroin shooting. <laughs> Boner jizz, four twenty rim job. That's my new Twitch. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. Rim job, rim job. Boner four twenty rim. Boner rim. What if you just say rim? Like that's yeah, slang. Like, mm, <laughs> there's like one person working at Twitch reviewing all these names. Like, well. what, what, if, what if my Twitch name is Rim Gerb? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just like, no, I'm a big fan of Coach Z from Homestar Runner. Uh, like, and <laughs> yeah. Anyway, stop trying to make it. I don't know. I, I always get a little hung up on these things because just like, man, Twitch is not a family friendly place. Y'all. Yeah. Like it's the goddamn wild west. Um, anywho, speaking of streaming a video, apparently Netflix has decided that they're going to make a Bioshock movie. I'm surprised it's taken this long for a Bioshock movie to get made. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's pretty cinematic as far as games are concerned. Do. Okay. So I, I, I wanted to I mean, cut some stories. So we have a little bit of um, a little bit of extra time, but like, would Bioshock make a good movie? I think the general premise would make a good movie, but the actual story of the game probably wouldn't work. Um, I mean, like the the biggest thing that everybody remembers from Bioshock, right, is the "Would you kindly" thing, right? Yeah, we, but which that works doesn't for... translate into a movie because it's right. It's kind of about taking advantage of the because as a player, you're directly interacting. So when that yeah turn happens, it's like oh my. Right. Your brain fucking exploded. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't uh, think you can do that part, but you can do the the general world and then kind of manipulate that into something more. Do you leave? Okay, let's say you're making the Bioshock movie, right? Yeah. Do you leave the 
uh, ultra libertarian Ayn Rand, Andrew Ryan messaging in there about how like unrestricted <laughs> capitalism turns people into rabbit monsters that fuck each other to death yeah. under the ocean <laughs> until the end of time and they shoot bees out of their hands yeah. or is it just an action movie that happens to have a guy in a diving suit in it? I think it probably will turn into just an action movie that has a guy with a diving suit. Diving suit. I also don't think that the idea of atlas and frank fontaine like you'd have to rework that yeah and like because it's i mean like i'm not trying to you know i'm not trying to fucking give uh bioshock a rim gerb or anything but like <laughs> you know it's a really it's a really kind of interconnected plot right yeah frank fontaine is able to manipulate the lower classes because there's, you know, because of the ultra capitalist system of rapture, like the people that had to live in the tenements and fucking scrub the toilets are able to be co-opted by this gangster guy that buys their loyalty with like, you know, fresh food and like treating them like human beings yeah. as opposed to the ultra rich who are treating them like garbage. Like if you just filmed Bioshock the way that it was intended, I feel like you'd have a huge a weird backlash from people being like, oh, this is SJW propaganda, you know. Uh, that is true. Because it's a workers' revolt. Yeah. There's a lot of weird stuff that goes, I don't know. I'm just wondering, like, and then if you take all that stuff out, it, it just ends up being what, like a uh, like a Bioshock-flavored action movie, right? That's yeah. not, doesn't have any of the Isn't actual that core. What most, um like video, video game, game movies, movies do is just like the light it's like the LaCroix of movies right. <laughs> like it's the hint of the flavor of what it is but it's never it I don't know I mean I do know that new Bioshock or that new uh, Uncharted movie just looks really terrible God, I do not want to watch it yeah I think Michael offered me a plus one to go to the press screening and I was like, like fuck no, no. Yeah. I got better things to do with my life like trim my toenails <laughs> um, poor Michael looking for a date and you <laughs> turned him down yeah, so uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is going to be any good. Uh, but also, I'm, in, I'm intrigued. Like, I'd wait for a trailer to make it any like true decision. It's going to be produced by Vertical Entertainment, production company that worked on big studio horror films, including The Ring and It, which I <laughs> don't like either one of those yeah. very much. Yes. I prefer the original Ring, and I that it was boring. Yeah, boring. Um, so. <laughs> I don't know. Tell me a director and maybe. Well, if it's like Guillermo del Toro's Bioshock. Yeah. All of a sudden, I give a shit. Also, I mean, wouldn't it just be like, you're going to go to all the trouble of building stuff and making sets and doing whatever. Wouldn't it be better as like a, a series? I always think video games are way more adaptable to be a series. Yeah. But they, you know. I mean, Bioshock the... is divided into, into like five discrete areas, right? Mm -hmm. like you do each area. You have a whole season worth of the, um, God, What's the name of the artist in there? The 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 crazy artist that's like turned people into living sculptures. Oh, yeah. uh, God. Not Fontaine, but yeah, the other the other guy. Like you get a whole season where it just turns into a horror movie, and then the next one where because the whole <laughs> first be kind of awesome. Actually. What is what that guy that's like the the crazy plastic surgeon that's mm -hmm. like turned into a serial killer? I mean, I don't know. I feel like it'd be better if you're gonna do all that work. You might as well like do it correctly instead yeah. of just pooping out something for several million dollars then it's like great you've made a bad version of bioshock that's worthless to everybody nobody cares yeah and you spent a lot of money on it yeah you wasted money and you played yourself yep um all right before we get to the trailers uh it's kind of an interesting thing apparently on uh in horizon forbidden west there is a trophy called reached the daunt that is actually just the trophy that you get for going out of the opening area of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you get one, apparently uh, Sony will plant a tree. Nice. Uh, they've got up to two, uh, 288,000 trees. So it's just, you know, kind of goes up. And it's from now until March 25th uh, at midnight, Pacific Standard Time, um, up to 28,000 trees to plant, nice. which is kind of cool. Uh, there's also, uh, I like the fact that this is apparently legit because they literally have like the three locations that they are going to be planting trees in. Mm -hmm. 
which is uh, Douglas County Forest in Wisconsin uh, that needs conifer trees. Uh, let's see. The Sheep Fire Private Lands in California that had a bunch of burn damage, uh, so 30,000 acres. Uh, and uh, Torreya State Park in Florida that's 13,000 acres and has a declining population. And all of these are specific like uh, animal refuges. Nice. So planting that's... these trees will keep turtles and wolves and stuff with like open uh, forest to do their thing in. Nice. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. From there, we're going to go directly into... The cinematic trailer for Horizon Forbidden West, which is out. Well, by the time this comes out, it will already be out. Yeah. It's going to be out. You've in, all been playing it. Uh, three and a half hours our time. But uh, I the, the this one is looking pretty good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful cinematic trailer. Uh, it's not exactly like the most. Well, obviously, it's not like this is all pre-rendered. But I actually took a look today at some video of like uh, comparing and especially going back and playing the previous game, which yeah. I did a little bit of. Um, when you compare that to like what this new one looks like, it looks really good. In fact, one of the biggest things though that I like about it is that it looks like they have a huge kind of diversity of environments and the environments are very like colorful and detailed and have a lot of like um, a, a lot of character to them. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. From there, we got a trailer. Did you get a chance to watch this Old Republic trailer, Amanda? Yes. Uh, so the old Star Wars: The Old Republic had a new expansion, and they created another one of those crazy blur trailers uh, called Disorder for it. Uh, it's funny how over the years there have been like four of these, mm -hmm. and they're all excellent cinematic little cgi movies yeah and none of them have anything to do with the video well the, the characters some of the characters are in the game but like no part of the act the way that this trailer looks is the way that this mmo rpg looks yeah um i really liked this one though uh because it had a lot it, it, everybody should go watch it but it had, it was kind of talking about like you know the jedi order taken taking yeah. people away from their family yeah just like dragging kids away separating siblings yeah yeah um and it's really pretty too it is uh i also heard i, I saw during the, the break that we had that apparently the new content in the uh this expansion is like two hours at most hmm. uh and that a lot of people are not digging on the changes and the things that have been changed but I don't know. You got a six-minute uh, CGI trailer out of it. Yeah. So. It's awesome. This is like a short film. I yeah. Mean, it's just its own thing. It makes me miss the Overwatch ones. I just stopped that. <sighs> yeah, yeah, but like I just pull away from Overwatch anyway. So like they could still be coming out with them. I'd be like, no. I'd still watch those, though. Yeah. I don't know. Um, what was the last one? May? Was it? Was May the last? Or no. Was it McCree? Well, before now he's um, something else. I don't even remember. Yeah, they changed his name, but it was like him and the the new lady, and there was like a train heist, and then that like robot that Echo or oh, Eva yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the last <sighs> one. Maybe who knows? Maybe there's like a hundred more of them. And I just don't even right. Know. Yeah, they're like we've been continuing to come out with them. Uh, let's see from there. Uh, speaking of DLC and added stuff, Chivalry Two, uh, which was a really really fun game in my opinion, uh -huh. got this new uh, House Aberfell update uh, that appears to have a very kind of like I don't know Scottish Highlander yeah. feel to it. Um, there's like a new map. There's a new raid. Uh, there's some new weapons. Um, apparently you can capture the pigs and I, livestock. I love that the <laughs> clip they show is just a dude running with a pig and pig's like, I guess this is my life now. <laughs> I like it the way that it goes from a guy carrying a pig to a guy carrying a guy <laughs> <laughs> direction. Um, yeah, giant claymores, big, big, uh, looks like some some kilts going on in here. Hell yeah. Apparently one of the other things is that there's uh, attack bees. There's oh like yeah. Big nice beehives time. that you can smack and then create bee hazards for That's people. Amazing. Not uh, the bees are in my mouth. Yeah. I like the fact that this guy, when they're showing off the sword, totally has this dippy ass Prince Valiant haircut. I know. It makes him look like a giant nerdo. <laughs> um, Papa, this, don't hurt me with your sword. <laughs> this game is so fun because it's just like. That's so bloody. The game has a dedicated yell button. And so you all just start running towards the objective. Ah! And then one person just is like, ah! 
God. Then somebody else is like, ah, ah, everybody's just yelling That's amazing. and running, and it's fucking great. I don't know if this is a um, – one thing I don't know about this is whether was this a, a – I don't know if this is a paid update or if this is a oh. free update. I think it was a free update. Let's That's see. Blah, 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 blah. Launches today. I don't see any – cost wait uh the game will be 33 percent off so i don't yeah i don't see anything i don't see anything indicating a cost i don't know it could be but it seems like it's just it's also just one map i feel like yeah i mean that seems like they would a free update and isn't yeah. outlandish uh let's see <laughs> speed of games is the number two in the title uh we got uh a launch trailer for destiny 2 the witch queen mm -hmm. i put this in here because this trailer is wonderful mm -hmm. and it looks so exciting and it looks like a fucking awesome video game that i totally want to play and it is without a doubt a huge ass lie because nothing that is in this trailer is what you're actually going to be doing in the game you're just gonna be shooting a guy with your destiny machine gun oh, over yeah. and over and over again with your three pals in the newest raid that comes that out looks cool yeah i really wish that destiny was a single player game yeah because i would really like to play it but i've been burned a hundred times by this game about when they put out trailers like this and they look great and then I go maybe I should do it and then I go to play it and it's fucking terrible yeah. <laughs> or it's just repetitive that's understandable like it's not terrible it's just it's you know just doing the same thing shooting yeah. guys shooting guys shooting Under guys delivers. yeah I mean there's just there's not a lot of like I think that this was a, a, compa a complaint in early Halo right mm -hmm. where it was just like and then you shoot some guys, and you get on the Warthog, and then you drive over here, and then you shoot some more guys, and then you get on the Warthog, and you drive over here, yeah. and you shoot some Flood, and then you shoot some more Flood, and then there's some more guys, and you shoot those guys. And it's like, but I don't care about any of this. Yeah. And there's a certain amount of like when you're just shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting, and you're shooting so that you can get better guns, so that you can shoot more guys, so you can get better guns, so you can shoot more guys. There's people that live for that in video games, though. 100%. And I am not judging yeah, them not, even a little bit. Yeah. All I'm saying is that I watched this trailer and I was just like, wow, I totally wanted to play this game if this was what this what, was what like. What it actually was, yeah. Yeah. So, but I don't know. And it's the big new expansion for Destiny 2 coming out next week. Probably not going to see it on Rage Select. Mm -hmm. Probably not. I think the last one was the one that you and I played where they brought in, they brought Nolan North back or whatever. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. The guy or whatever, or they killed him or one of the two. Something happened. Thing happened. I don't remember. Ugh. Yeah! From there, we're going to talk about... Oh man, I put this in just for you. WWE 2K Thanks, 2022, my GM trailer. Yep. Yeah. You call the shots. Uh, so, yeah, apparently... Well, like, GM mode is a big deal. Because yeah, uh, they've been begging for it for years. So, okay, I just want to say, like, uh, um, I don't know anything about this, uh -huh. right? This is just fantasy football but with wrestlers and kind then, like, of it, yeah yeah it you, uses like, you the have engine. your own draft so you get your own wrestlers and then you are trying to your show to have your show have the best like have the um most fans that watch and you're beating the other shows and can i ask a question is this is this <laughs> is the entire existence of this mode basically catering to fans who are like you guys are running the business wrong. I could totally do a better job than you. Yes. Uh, yeah, 100%. Okay. But, like, I mean, it's also, uh, like, an old feature that used to be in their games that they got rid of a long time ago. And okay. so people just want it back. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, wrestling fans are all about fucking armchair booking and, like, yeah, sitting on their couch. And, I, yeah, I could have done this better. And it's just like, eh, but could you? Um. Apparently, there's like four GMs that you could choose from, or you could make your own. Yeah, you can uh, do. Uh, you can either be Shane McMahon, Stephanie Mc, who doesn't work for the company in real life anymore. Uh -huh. uh, Stephanie McMahon, Adam Pierce, or Sonia Deville, um, and uh, they each come with bonuses. Like they, they like buffs. Yeah, yeah. Where it's just like you know, this person's really good with newcomers, and this person's really good with like money, or has like a little extra bonus cash or whatever uh it's kind of like starting um this might be too old of a reference for people but in oregon trail you would like have to pick your 
occupation before you started your sure. journey and then like it'd be like if you're a carpenter you can fix uh wagon wheels easier but if you're a banker you have more money and if you're a whatever right. it's kind of that you're just picking your little buffs and then you can also create your own gm which apparently uses the same character creator from like the make a wrestler character yeah which is fine i mean most of the people that all of them are wrestlers, are so it's, like, it's oh, the same okay. thing anyway but yeah i don't know the idea of playing a stephanie mcmahon makes me want to shoot myself in the <laughs> face but <laughs> sure i guess like uh i also apparently what you can you when you make your team you can then like play those matches yeah or watch them in like a spectator mode yeah so like i was talking to john about this and and he said that there's like three versions so you can do just um simulate where you can either watch or um just it's like a card in front of you that's like bob versus joe and and then simulate and it's just joe wins. oh and it just re- resolves yeah, it'll just tell you the results um, okay and then you have the you can play so if you're like i'm booking this and i want to make damn sure this person wins so i'm going to play as that person and i'm going to win okay um or you can um uh do something that's more like it's a like director just... of the series so you're you're watching it like you'd be watching the sh- the show uh-huh. but you can direct like cam- the camera they give you like different oh. angles and stuff okay i don't know if that actually does anything maybe like better angles get you more fans or something you know what i mean but like i i <laughs> it seems I, like a weird thing to put front and center when like the last thing that they did was the was the actual showing off the gameplay. Yeah. And it was like not that long ago that they did that. Now they're jumping immediately into this mode that seemed, I don't, again, this also came from like, they put out a trailer, but then they also put out this like 17 minute live stream, which was the thing I was referring to before. Yeah. About they're all talking all over each other the entire time. And they're all their weird wrestling fans. So shit talking nervous nerds and shit. Like, yeah. Um, God damn it! <laughs> there's this one picture. There's this one part. Who is this lady? Uh, that's Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair, where she walks by these two guys and they just fucking rotate in place with these dead <laughs> expressions on their face. Yeah, like that's... they're not even looking at her. They're just like, yeah, that's so weird. And like to look the rest at. of the audience is like, I don't know. There's like simulated reacting, but then here in the front, there's just these two fucking guys. Like they have poles shoved up the backsides. Yeah, and just, just like. like Ur, Ur. They yeah, remind turning. me of like the uh, uh, when I saw that. What I immediately thought of was the the aliens in Galaxy Quest when they're trying to talk to Tim Allen. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, the way that they turn their entire body without moving their arms around <laughs> or whatever. Um, I mean, I don't know. Do we want to? Do we want to make bets? Is it gonna be the most Titanic shit show of all time? We've only got a month, man. This thing comes out in like early March. You I know? think it's gonna be garbage. Like I don't know. It looks really bad. Like I, I mean, I don't know. If, again, that's just like I'm a regular video game man, and I look at this and go, "This does not look like a very good video game." Yeah. Um, and that maybe my expectations are all wrong because I'm not a fan of the Razzlin games. So I don't know. I I don't think it looks good. I have, um, I have no interest in it. Yeah. But also I don't watch for WWE anymore. So what's, what is even the point? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I just think that if you guys, if you guys, if it doesn't sell well, if everybody listens to the Rage Tech podcast and doesn't buy it, mm-hmm. or, or at least just wait until it comes out. Like at this point, don't pre-order for it. God's sake, just wait a few days until after it comes out and then be like, Oh, Twitter shows that this game is completely fucking broken yeah. and messed up. Um, because, like, it's already happened several times yeah. in the past. Um, but if people don't buy this shit, then, like, maybe WWE will be like, well, we're not making money, which is the most important thing in our lives. Mm-hmm. So maybe we should take this license away and go give it to a different developer that would spend, that would give us a better game at the end of the day. Um, I don't know. Even games like even games like Madden look better than this, like yeah. the yearly sports games and stuff. But yeah, I don't know why WWE games look so fucking awful. I don't know. I, I can only assume it's just there's a there's a rush. Yeah, there's a rush. But it, it seems like self defeating to me, right? Where like rather than putting a game out every year, it seems like if you made a game that was so both it was so good that wrestling fans wouldn't shut the fuck up about it, and that regular people would look at and go. 
oh my god that game looks so good i want to play it that you would then end up <sighs> yeah. breaking out of just the niche market and making even more but yeah i definitely ugh. i don't know it's live, it's live streaming is showing all of these like menus of booking venues and shit like i don't know anyway here's something cool teach me ninja turtles that's yeah cool. i saw this before you sent me the link yeah, it actually came out last week, I think right around the time that we were recording the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game's coming out. They put the splinter in there. Hell yeah. In there. Um, this, this is how you do the fan service. Hell yeah. <laughs> like, do it. Uh, this do game that fan service. Looks really excellent. I love everything that I'm seeing about it. I love the fact that in this mall, there's a Foot Clan like, guy working at the sushi he's bar. He's got to make a living. And uh, the Foot Clan has taken over the mall. Hell yeah, they have. But yeah, Splinter's in there. I don't, I mean, I don't know. It's so fucking clean. It's, how, I want it. <laughs> well, the question is, how many more characters are we going to see? Well, it depends on if they're going to deep dive into beyond just the we have to have casey jones first of all we don't have a reveal for casey jones yet that's true uh, before this comes out there's got to be a casey jones there somewhere but my god does this ever look good i know i it's, want it like there's there's some room on the over here yeah, on the yeah, right I got side a little bit of space side, over there where you can put in a casey uh, jones give me casey jones but also give me uh venus de milo Oh, the lady turtle. Yeah. yeah. Hell to the yeah. That would work. I don't mind pissing people off about liking uh, Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation. I think if if a person didn't it decided they didn't want to buy this game because there was a lady turtle in it, that that's like... Yeah, but I, a lady I, turtle based on a TV series that everybody hated. I believe that would be such a small amount of people that it's like who cares yeah like they might be very vocal on twitter but that they're they're still just gonna go but i want to play it so yeah. I'm, I'm gonna buy it and just not use this one character yeah um but, yeah but, but i would love it but i also just want casey jones at this point yeah uh let's see it looks great we also got a really weird pokemon live action trailer yes oh my god <laughs> i love this trailer one because it has nothing to do with the video game and two it's just a fucking munchlax eating garbage food yeah and like it's i you know y'all should know me by now and know that i love puppets and this is a great puppet but it has no expression yep. and so it's really just a tilt every once in a while that is so good <laughs> like who's that whoever's puppeteering it they just did a great job because it's so funny to watch because well, it doesn't say anything yeah and it, it's and it he just barely moves yeah this guy just reacts to it and every once in a while I'll, like open its mouth and it's funny so like the the whole point is that there's like these people that are on like a cooking show and they've cooked really bad food and the host is like nobody would eat this and then he puts his plate down next to the inexplicable munchlax that is on this <laughs> yeah. show on every time it, like they're it's so smart i love the uh how to express something is happening without showing it they don't ever have the uh puppet <laughs> like cookie monstering these foods yeah they what they do is they just put the food down in front of them they cut to a reaction and then they cut back to the plate wiggling yes and then him just staring at the chef yeah and that's so <laughs> funny to me <laughs> Yeah, like I, the only time is there's that one point where they have a bunch of spaghetti. Coming yeah, out he of just his has mouth. like noodles coming out of his mouth. But like, yeah, it's very. It's just cute. so. It's so weird. It does nothing but make me want that puppet. Oh, the, the Munchlax puppet. Hell yeah. Yeah. Does Munchlax say his name? I thought all the Pokemon say their name. They do, but this oh. is just I think <laughs> what they wanted to do it's with it. It's just such a like I don't know what the hell this has to do with Pokemon, but yeah. it's great. Uh, yeah, I feel like somebody made that puppet and they were like, you know, it'd be funny. And it, just, you know what it reminds me of is the Muppet Show. It reminds me of like a sketch on the Muppet yeah, Show, hundred percent, as opposed to something uh, specifically Pokemon related. So, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we got a full on. We got a gameplay trailer uh, for Dune Spice Wars that was announced, I believe, at the Game Awards, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which showed off that this is definitely a 4X uh, game. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of civilization style on the ground. Um, if it's a 4X game, though, it's got to be different planets, I believe. Because uh, most 4X or uh, most of the games that I've ever seen that say 4X go to between different planets. And yeah. there are a lot of different planets in the Dune universe. So, like, you know, you got Kaladin, you got X, you got uh, Giddy Prime and stuff like that. Um, this definitely seems like an old school strategy game uh, and definitely not my style of video yeah, game. Yeah, I watched the trailer and was just like, <laughs> well, I'll never play this. Maybe maybe when the Dune game comes out 
it'll be the perfect time for you and I to play the uh, <laughs> the game where they took there's an old Dune one game where they just took that original game mm-hmm. and left the the gameplay intact, but then just added a bunch of sex scenes in nice. between the different characters. Hundred <laughs> percent into it. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, it looks real clean. They get a very brief shot of Baron Harkonnen looking all fat and stuff, looking all chunky. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of hard to to make the world's most exciting trailer out of like what's going on here. Yeah, but not into it. Seven out of ten. Yep. Uh, and then let's see, our last trailer is for, is that No Man's Sky Sentinel update that I was talking about before? Uh, no Man's Sky has a new mode. I'm actually much more interested in this mode than I am in any of the previous ones because yeah. they're literally like beefing up the Sentinels, which were the only thing. Well, okay. There was some antagonistic life forms. There were some space pirates. But then when you were on the planet, the main thing that would shoot at you slash you would shoot at were the robots, were the Sentinel robots. Um, But like they only ever came and fucked with you. They like you trying to be mining some shit and then one of them would run up and be like, hey, hey. And then you just wait for it to go away and you were like, okay, great. I can go back to doing this. Oh, sorry, sir. I didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah. But there's you can also uh, there's the new there's an AI version of the mechs. So you can have a big mech boy that follows you around. Uh, there's some new, new um, kind of like robot, like outposts that you can go into where you can get rewards. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing that I was never entirely sure about. Was like, well, I mean, if the robots start attacking me, why don't I just run away and then leave? Because nothing matters. But like, if you can get like a big reward by fighting the robots and winning, yeah. Well, then that suddenly makes things more interesting. Makes it a little more appealing. Because mm-hmm. the one thing that I feel like No Man's Sky doesn't have very much of is conflict. Because uh, yeah. it's mostly about exploration and even the building, you know, building the buildings and stuff like that. There's just there never seemed to be that much conflict on the ground. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of cool to see this happening uh not just that but sean murray did an interview with uh ign where he talked about how apparently this is uh, this was uh, the 19th update to no man's sky wow. since it launched yeah and apparently uh he said that they're just like have a huge list of they're nowhere near done uh with that's no cool man's though sky. like i kind of like that i it uh, you know it was a disappointment when it first came out yep but I like that not only are did they dedicate themselves to making sure that it became a playable game, but mm-hmm. now they they're still dedicating themselves to make it like to add more continuously. Yes. Yep. Like uh, I approve that kind of growth. Yep. And apparently, that's how you fucking do it. I mean, apparently, also they're making enough money to. I mean, because you think about it, like they haven't actually put out, uh, like the the money that they're making has to be based on new people buying no man's sky whenever one of these big updates comes out because Mm -hmm. they haven't none of this has been dlc none of it's been paid dlc and i think they've released one indie game on like the epic store but like it's not like they i I don't feel like it original the original sold well enough for them to be like what like four years into into this thing with no yeah like additional in, it's not a live service game. It's not like people are paying for servers or updates yeah. or anything like that. Uh, you still just get all of this for buying the game. So pretty amazing. I uh, guess when it comes out on the free. Switch, uh, they'll have a, a big influx of new people buying it. Uh, let's see. Capcom is teasing something on their website. Yeah. Um, they put out a random link that takes you to a blank screen with a countdown um, to something. Uh, some people think that the font that they're using is definitely like a uh, Resident Evil style font. It does look Resident evil Uh, it is entirely possible that this is the aforementioned DLC for Resident Evil Village that they were at E3 and they were just like, also, we're making DLC for this game. And everyone was like, I mean, what? And they were like, don't worry about it. We'll tell you later. Yeah. Uh, but we'll find out. Well, wait, three days and four hours as of us recording this means that it'll be... What, the day after this podcast comes out? Oh, no, probably the same day this comes out. So Ooh. We'll, we'll be behind the times. As um, usual. Yeah. And last but not least, we got some fun stuff. Uh, somebody's remaking an old Game Boy Resident Evil game uh, in 3D. So Resident Evil Gaiden was a Game Boy Advance game that was like a weird top-down. Uh, it's a Game Boy Color game that was very just 
basic and primitive. Mm -hmm. And there's a team that is basically putting together a full 3D remake of it, um, even though that game is now not considered canon. So there's that. More interesting for Amanda... Uh, somebody has modded the <laughs> Kirby Mouthful mode car I, into Mario Kart 8. It's my favorite article. It's, it's just the whole combination of like someone already modded Kirby yeah. into Mario Kart 8. And then the next thing is just a gif of the uh, Mouthful mode uh, Kirby car driving around in Mario Kart. And then the first sentence of the article is uh, the moment Kirby uh, sucked up a car in the latest Nintendo Direct things changed <laughs> and that is like the funniest thing i ever read like i was like straight up guffawing in my apartment watching this reading the article yeah because you know of course his uh, little <laughs> feet in the background like ah <laughs> it's so funny i love it yeah it's pretty great yeah i'm gonna get a cur I, I have a kirby tattoo i'm gonna get another kirby tattoo and it's just gonna be him like mouthful Mode. Could you could you could you take one of your existing tattoos and then like have them tattoo Kirby over it in mouthful, like mouthful mode? mode. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we didn't have enough Horizon Zero Dawn in here. They oh, are yeah. putting out a uh, Horizon Forbidden West Tall Neck and Aloy Lego set. Um, I think is big. It's a yeah, big it's Mama Jamma. Huge. Yeah. Uh, and it comes with a little Lego Aloy, uh, and then also a little Lego Watcher. Um, I looked it up on the website, and apparently it's eighty bucks. Which is actually just, that's not that bad. It's really not that bad. The bigger ones tend to be like over a hundred to two hundred dollars. So yeah. that one looks pretty big for eighty bucks. Yeah. I just don't think that I can just I could justify spending eighty bucks on something like it's this. It's funny. So. I love putting Legos together, but then when I have the Legos and they're done, I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna do with this? I okay. just, do I display my? One of our fans <laughs> sent me that Lego ad at that has been in my kitchen for years and is covered in yeah. dust, and it's just like, well, I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Like, you know, I Matt gave me the statue of the guy from Darksiders oh, Genesis. Yeah. I just, I don't know, shoved it in a corner. It's been there ever since. Michael got me the Amiibo for Solaire from Dark Souls. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. I don't display things. I'm not that guy. Yeah, like, that is fair. <laughs> That's so, why I don't buy you things. I don't want them. One time I got you a praying mantis finger puppet. Yes. And it's just on the shelf up there somewhere. It's up the shelf up there. Yeah. 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 And that's it. Along with the Ragefinity Gauntlet, all my amiibos, Jeff Puppet, yeah. like everything. So yeah, that's that's the moral of this podcast. Don't give me stuff. Yeah. I don't want it. Just give me your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just go to patreon.com forward slash rights. Like, give me your money. <laughs> that way we can buy more games. It's not like I want the money to for like cocaine. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna uh, buy me anything, you gotta buy me video games because that's what I want. I don't and, want anything else. And then I get the video games and then I make the video and then I give you back the video of the video games that I bought with the money that you And then you me. like the video, so you give me more money. And then you give me more money. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> It's a vicious cycle. The circle of life. <laughs> it's a it's a beautiful cycle. Uh, <laughs> we should all be so lucky to be part of this cycle. Anyway, that's the Rage Suck Podcast. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I think that's it. That's it. Yeah. So, bye. Have a good week. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye.